Drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Gio down the inside. Gio moves across, they're both in front of Milan and Pugge. Before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, it's a big look and a switch to show out. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race 
or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, indeed, and welcome to Chaz Draycott Media, and welcome to the very first round, or pair of rounds, I should say, from the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championships fourth season here on the channel. I am Chaz Draycott, delighted to be joined by Ed May in the commentary box. Ed, fantastic to have you here for this new championship to the channel. It's bound to be an exciting night tonight. We've got GT3 cars aplenty, 49 cars in the session, three classes, loads of different formats. This is going to be a hell of a season, isn't it? It certainly is. We need to have a workout out for us because there's going to be so much action up and down the field. I mean, just trying to keep track of the practice times that are coming in now is going to be hard work. But hopefully we will be in for a real treat. Two 30 minute races in store after a qualifying session that lasts 18 minutes. Drivers go around by themselves for about four laps, get the best time in. And it is a single um, driver qualifying sessions. So they don't basically have an open track. It's just basically one driver on the track at a time, but all done simultaneously. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a brilliant night of racing because they are going to be so, so busy, much like us up here in the commentary box. As you see, we are at Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache here in Brazil known to many of us as Interlagos. Very tricky track to start the season off with, though, with lots of undulation, lots of challenges around this place. I really, really excite myself so much when I drive around this track. Uh, to be honest, though, Ed, I'm terrible around here. I'm not sure about you, but I, I just can't get this place right because, especially in GT3 cars as well, there's a lot of places where the back end can sort of flow out very easily and the car can break away from you here. It's certainly going to be a big test of the drivers, isn't it, to get the championship underway? You need to have a real deft right foot, just easing it onto the throttle, especially through that middle sector when you're coming out of Ferrador and you've got all of those sort of tight, almost hairpin-esque corners. It's so hard to finally balance the car and it's an area of the circuit as well where it's basically one line. You can maybe try and sneak a couple of moves up the inside, but as soon as you're out of one corner, you're into another. You don't really get a chance to get up alongside one another. Mm. So late moves, diving up the inside is the only real way you can make any passes through that area of the circuit, at least. Then when you're obviously coming out of Junsao, it's basically flat out up the uh, rise of the crest in yeah. towards the CRS, where I think we're going to see a majority of the action into that portion of the circuit. And then, of course, coming down the retro poster down to Decidio de Lago. I'm hearing that there's potential audio issues and I have no clue as to possibly why. There is nothing different about my setup for this evening compared to what we've had before. So I'm really sorry about that, everybody. Martin Kenyon saying there's audio issues. There's a uh, potential echo. We'll have to try and get to the bottom of this, but I've got everything set up as it usually is. So I don't have a clue why that's happening. There's literally no difference to the broadcast that I did literally yesterday. So I'm not sure, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to quickly look at some cars though, Ed, because we have GT3 cars on the channel for the very first time. This is bound to be a mighty, mighty exciting one because, well, I mean, we've got some very powerful machines out there, but a lot of Porsches. Don't tell anyone. There's a lot of Porsches, isn't there? There is a lot of Porsches. We've got sort of packs of them in and around the field, sort of with a couple of Ferraris, some Mercedes, BMWs and Lamborghinis sort of interspersed in the mix and also we have a couple of Audis in the session both of those currently towards the tail end of the field at least if the practice times are to be believed but of course we do have three classes to focus on don't we Chaz? Yes we do indeed we have the elite class which has kindly sort of spread itself down the uh, down the timing tower we also of course have the premier class which is sort of like a pro-am class and then the evo class as well which is going to be designated by the uh, the three colors as you see on the screen the drivers pretty much have free reign with their liveries so there is no sort of designation on the cars themselves but we will do our very best to keep you informed of who is who 
with that over the course of the evening. We can tell you that this man, though, is currently top of the pile. This is Troy Dolinchek, I believe a new driver for the championship as well in the number 217 Porsche. We'll go on board with the Porsche, shall we, and ride on board with him as he comes towards the sort of later part of the lap here in the 992 GT3R. It is a great-looking, great-sounding race car, this, isn't it, Ed? And to be fair, while I, I did mention a moment ago we've got a lot of them, I think we're quite blessed to have them because what a great machine. Yeah, we really do. This is a magnificent bit of kit. It's not quite got the same level of adoration that I have for the RSR as I have for this car. Porsche 911 RSR is a insane bit of kit. But I'll tell you what, this is really nice as well. You can see as well the line that they're taking, basically crossing over the pit entryway just to shave off those extra few like hundreds and thousands of a second as he comes up to the line and a lot of drivers will be doing that in qualifying and the race of course that does not cause invalidation of your lap anyway that doesn't count as an off track but that is something that the drivers will maybe need to worry about with certain drivers deciding to come into the pits and other drivers carrying on at pace yeah, definitely. Plenty to look at, plenty to listen to as well. Uh, we'll look at some of the different cars that we have up and down the order. We've got Lamborghinis with us tonight as well. This is Thomas Pugh in the Barbecue Bread Racing Lamborghini. Great looking machine. Fantastic sounding machine as well, the Lamborghini. We'll go on board with the, uh, the rear facing camera that we've got here. Very dramatic cameras as well. I've done uh, quite a lot of work on setting up these cars to all have similar-ish cameras. They've actually added a lot of motion blur for onboard cameras now on iRacing. You can change that and you can change the shake effects and all sorts. And I've really worked hard to make them uh, very, very dramatic and especially the onboard cameras as well. Annoyingly, they would have all been very similar on board had Lamborghini not decided to put a 72-inch monitor in the top of the cockpit on the inside of the car. So the Lamborghini view is a lot further down as compared to something like the BMW here, which is a little bit higher up. You get a good view of the mirror. But again, we get this similar sort of angle looking back and that colossal rear wing from the M4 GT3. We've got Ashley Brooks in the chat as well. He's one of the championship sponsors. Thanks again to the championship sponsors. You'll see their logos going through in the top right of your screen. We've got AB Designs, we've got Medius, we've also got the Keenan Eco Energy Company, and of course, we have on board with them Kame as well. Thank you to all of them and all the people that have been involved in getting this together and getting it all set up. This is Dave Russell. He's hoping to wrestle around the Positive Perception Esports Beamer tonight. We'll go a bit further down the order, then. We'll have a look at the fastest man in the Evo class at the moment, which, funnily enough, he's driving a Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. This is Gareth Newton in the Sumo Racing Lamborghini. Gorgeous-looking livery, to be honest there. Ed. I really do look forward to getting used to all the liveries that we have over the course of this campaign, but we're going to have some great-looking cars out on track. Yeah, there are certain very distinctive liveries, I must say. They're not on the circuit at the moment, but the two Audis are looking very nice. Hopefully we can have a little look at them in qualifying there in the Evo class. Obviously, up and down the grid, there are so many fights and storylines that will develop over the course of the season in their respective classes. And certain drivers having some good rounds, having some bad ones, but that's the sort of beauty of these seasons that go on over the course of 10 race meetings. Also, we do have championship formats where they have a drop round. So mm, it doesn't yes. necessarily matter if you have, say, a terrible score in one evening, as long as you can make up for it over the course of the season, then that should be all right for you. Yeah, where, though, of course, the drivers cannot drop the final round of the championship. Basically, the drop rounds are calculated at the end of round nine, so we see where everyone is basically going to stand, going into that final race of the season, and then the drivers know exactly what they need to do to try and win their championships. They absolutely do. Practice just coming to an end now, and as we've mentioned, there will be a lone qualifying session, so the drivers will basically have the track to themselves, but they will all be able to still qualify at the same time. If you've not seen it before in iRacing, it's a very thing, a very strange thing to see, but we will uh, hopefully get your heads around it. The first person I've just seen pop up on our timing is Robin Aston. Funnily enough, not in an Aston, but he is actually in the Porsche 992 GT3R. And what Rob does not know is that he's going to have the honours of taking us around this circuit for the first time, in terms of qualifying anyway. And he now runs down towards the scene of the Lago. Really, really typical and important overtaking opportunity really down here, isn't it, Ed? Because it's one of the first heavy braking zones on the circuit after that long run out of the first few corners. Yeah, obviously coming into the centre S is where we see some of the action, especially maybe at the beginning of the 
race, but especially coming down, like you say, towards the CD de Lago, you see a lot of action. Also, potentially some action in towards Ferrador as a bit of after, as if there's some swapping and changing through the CD de Lago. If the car behind maybe gets a better run, you can see drives opting to sneak up the inside through that long, sweeping right hander. Then we have these hairpin S corners where you can carry a deceptively large amount of speed, but the amount of entry speed that you have to take in is basically determined by how wide open you have to take the corner. During the race, I don't think the drivers will quite steer over too far to the edges of the circuit. They might try and cover off the inside a little bit more, which might reduce the lap times. But as we can see, getting started for his first flying lap, stay on board with Robin Aston. Absolutely flying now as the Porsche goes all the way up through the revs, up to 9,000 RPM from this gorgeous 992 GT3R really do love the look of this racing car it's very similar to the 991 in a lot of ways but the gt3 in particular looks like a very squashed version of it because the porsches have always been the sort of wide uh, sorry the more narrow and sort of taller of the gt3 cars but the 992 is the first one they've done that looks really flat and chunky you know it's as beefy as the amgs that we may have we've got a couple of them in the field as well throughout this season there's also the ferrari 296 which we haven't looked at yet as well the bmw m4 then again no one wants to look at the front end of that thing but, like I say, one of the best things about GT racing is that you do get such variation in all of the cars that we get to see. And we've got nobody putting the time in yet, of course. They are just cracking on where they can be. Uh, we've got Luke Lucchesi actually flying at the moment. He's done some purple sectors in the RDSA Esports machine, South African driver. There seems to be quite a few South African drivers in the series. I can also see uh, Jamal Gandor is with us for Simsa Esports. He's from Lebanon. I recognize that flag anywhere. And there's a bunch of other drivers. We've got drivers from the United States, Belgium, uh, like I say, a lot from South Africa as well. Uh, we've even got Dutch drivers, Germans. It's a brilliantly international field. And that's another great variation that we have here. There's people all over the world in this series, in different cars, different rigs, everyone using different hardware. It highlights the beauty of sim racing, doesn't it, Ed? Yeah, it does. The fact that all of these drivers from across the world can be racing together on the same bit of track is really brilliant to see it does let's say bring the whole sim racing world together you can see now some of the drivers getting started on their first times going through and rob van aston is the first to set a time that's a one minute 34.098 so decent first lap for robin aston really took a lot of the curve in the opening phase of that lap might have lost a little bit of time in the process because some more times are coming through just nailing Ingolstadt and I think Chaz has found a livery that he likes very much judging by that noise he's just made. <laughs> Looks very pretty, that quad dash racing Mercedes. It does and it sounds grand as well. Listen to this. Sounds like it's powered by a Merlin engine, this Mercedes. It's got an absolute great racket to it. It's got a real rasp to it as well. But we have times flying in, everybody. Dolinchek, as he was in practice, the fastest at the moment in the elite class ahead of Lucchesi and Albert. Then we have Fretwell, who's gone fastest in the premier class ahead of Engelstad and then Kru uh, Kruk, I should say. And then Stephen Cakebread is the quickest driver at the moment in the Evo category in his BMW. Thankfully, we look at the back of it. But we have Cakebread fastest at the moment, and I'm sure he's going to be the target for many a pun over the course of the seasons. We'll have to see what's baking in the background, I suppose, to uh, come up with those as the season progresses. But the time's really flying in now. We have so many drivers in each class, though. There's a lot for us to keep our eye on, and that's going to be pretty much the theme of the series until the very end, I think, to be honest, Ed, because there is so much to look at, isn't there? Yeah, there is, and there's a lot to look at in terms of all the different liveries we have here. This is the... Aura Motorsports Omega machine driven by Owen Seward. Just coming through Ferradura now. Oh, and then towards turn eight, this is a very tricky corner because you go from high speed, the car is still sort of weight transferring over to the left hand side. You need to really pitch it into the right. And then, ooh, and up into this right hander as well. We're seeing more times coming through and actually a change for the potential pole position. Ooh, never mind, for a moment it was uh, <laughs> Yanis Albert that took second place, but Troy Bolinchek took it back. Look at that nice, lovely sort of pink accents on his Porsche, <laughs> really highlighting and making the livery pop. Yeah, and look at that. Fourth fastest actually outright at the moment is Gianni Tenha, and he's also one of the quad dash racing drivers in that another fantastic livery, but it suits the Porsche even more. But he is actually fourth quickest overall at the moment. Now, if I try and give you... 
all of the classes, like this. We'll show you the positions outright. You can see the different colours there. So the drivers with no stripes next to their name basically get their... They're in the, uh, the elite class, I should explain. And then we have the premier class, which are the ones with the yellow stripes next to their names. And then the ready orangey colours, as Gareth Newton just goes fastest in the Evo class, are a little bit further down, as you see there. Now, they're given their class positions there as opposed to their overall. But if we change that to overall, you get a bit of a better idea as to where everybody is. But it is Troy Dolinshek that's fastest. We've got the Brayton backs together in the barbecue bread racing machines. But it is Jean ahead of Marcel. Jean in the BMW that we see here. Marcel in the Ferrari. The 296 is the first one we've actually looked at tonight. And it's going to be a car that I moan about all season, Ed, because I love the look of the front of this car. I think it's absolutely sublime. However, if you look at it side on and look at the back of it, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Because it's just... It's a car of two halves. It's too round and bulbous mm. and weird at the back. But the front end it is looks so pointy and exciting. He looks very Italian at the front and the rear end. It looks more American. It looks like sort of the newer Corvette, which yeah. I guess is understandable because the newer Corvette models are basically just Ferraris in different dresses. Essentially, if you look at their GTE car, that's essentially a Ferrari 488 GTE, but just with a different body shape to it. Mm. But I do agree. It does look like a very nice car, especially from this angle we get coming straight towards us. Mm -hmm. But then see the side and the rear end. And, <laughs> oh, Quick, run away. <laughs> run away. Flee to another car. Flee. Actually, if you could, Chaz to Sorry. one of the Audis. We've got Alex Boniface and Danny Weir for DXT Motorsports Academy. These look very nice. Mm, yes, indeed. Very tasty. The DXT Motorsport Academy livery, very tasty on this car. It's almost like all the panel lines have been sort of just spray painted where, like, just black. Like, they, they didn't quite have enough vinyl wrap to do all the panels and do it exactly. But it's just an awesome looking machine. Great sound as well, of course. Shares its 5.2 litre V10 with the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. And it's the same engine that a lot of the R8s and Huracans have always had. But of course, race tuned. This is the Evo 2 version of it. You can usually tell it apart from the earlier Audi R8 GT3 cars via the shape of the front lights and the grills around the edges of the front bumper. But the main giveaway is those massive struts on that rear wing that curve around the back of the rear wing and over the front. It's a very interesting design. Almost looks like the wing was going to fall off and the struts had to catch it. But it's a great looking and great sounding car once again. We've got 47 cars have set times at the moment. Chris Keenan, Simon Cheshire, Christoph Demay and Dennis Kohler have not put times in as of right now though, Ed. So we're still waiting to see what those guys can do. Yeah, still a few times to come through as we follow Thomas Pugh for Barbecue Bread Racing with the lovely little Springbok inspired livery. Must be a fan of the, the South African rugby team. And up through the final couple of corners now looking to, to improve, if he can, on his 10th place in the elite class. Currently 13th overall because there are a few of the premier drivers just up ahead of him. He did improve, you know, but not though. enough. Not enough for a change of position. And I think by the way that he's lifted off the throttle, that is probably his last real attempt. Yes, that's the four laps. Get four laps, and that seems to be his fourth one done and dusted. Yeah, that was his uh, fourth and final lap completed there. So he's now done with for that session. Uh, we've actually got Christophe Demay now out on the circuit. This is his second lap that he's doing, so he's already completed one. You can see the BMW trying to break away a little bit there through turn two, and he's actually seemingly backed out of that. Uh, Van Rens is flying at the moment. Wesley Van Rens trying to get quickest in his category. Escuderia Panthera. See whether he improves enough. He's 37th outright, and he goes up to second place in class by just two thousandths. Would you look at that? The top four in Evo separated by 42 thousandths, and the top four in the elite class, sorry, top three in the elite class, separated by 69 <laughs> nice thousandths of a second. That is ridiculously close. The guys in the chat have been telling us it's going to be close. But that's just on another level. It really is. We've got a real treat of a season in store here on Chaz Draycott Media. And I must say, it's going to be interesting to see what Christoph Demai can do because mm. with only one lap on the board, he's currently up in seventh place overall, sixth in class. He's got a lot more time in this session and plenty more laps as well yeah. to find a few more tenths per second. Currently, four and a half tenths off of pole position. 
and by the looks of things, Dylan Sheck, Albert, Lucchese, all of those top three drivers have set their laps and aren't going to be coming out for any more improvements. Kostrick's just gone from 17th up to 12th in his class. He's decided to pull the car over and he will pop back to the pits. Christophe Demay will now get on with his lap. Down the start, finish straight goes in the ugliest GT3 car I've seen in years. But it's not his fault. Not the livery, just the car itself. Awful front end. Makes a great <laughs> racket, though, to be honest with you. It's got a really strange six-cylinder racket to it. Quite similar to the M4 GT4s, actually. I believe they use a very similar engine. This, obviously, single turbocharged, whereas the GT4 equivalent is not turbocharged. But BMW do make a very good big GT car, don't they, Ed? It's something they've done for a long time with the M8 GTE, the M6 GT3. To be fair, even the Z4, they turned that into yeah. a big car. And it's just always been a formula that the BMW have done well. Yeah, it's because the production model of the Z4 was quite small and dinky mm. and dainty, wasn't it? But then when you look at like the me. GT4, the GT3 equivalent, it was just they just stuck a wide body kit on. Yeah, it they was. Went a, they went a rocket bunny and were like, right, <laughs> slap this on, off we yeah. go. It is definitely. They they went right down the. Uh, they they rang someone at Liberty Walk, couldn't quite get in, and then uh, Rocket Bunny said, "Yeah, go on then. Why not?" Uh, I want to look at this because. I've seen Simsa Esports liveries before. I think we commentated together on them, did we not? Yes. On the uh, so. the Apex Technologies LMP2 Championship. Uh, mm -hmm. Simsa had a bunch of cars there. They've always got beautiful racing machines, and Jamal Gandor's Mercedes is no exception to that. It upsets me a little bit that the number boards are white and so are the numbers, but that's fine. We can gloss over that. Chaz isn't going to get triggered for round one. Still got five minutes left of the session. Uh, David Russell's in the chat actually said uh, I designed the quad dash liveries glad you like them yes I'm back watching qualifying <laughs> good stuff David well thank you very much mate it's uh, it's a beautiful job you've done there mate to please our eyes and we certainly do enjoy them now Jamal Gandor is what feels like in the middle of the field here he's 29th at the moment 17th in class no improvements on any sectors so far though Ed so be improving on this lap I think because he's already done his four qualifying laps yes I think he's just using this session as a bit more time to get climatized mm. to the circuit and to really get those last few laps in for the race gets underway the first of two races of course we do have basically two 30 minute races with each of them requiring the drivers to make one pit stop so that could be interesting for the drivers deciding when they want to make those pit stops and how they time them relative to those that they're battling with. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be a flurry activity at the start or maybe at the end of the race, who knows? This is Nathan Crook. He's going to be the next car to cross the line. We've got Crook, then Demai, then Cheshire, and they are going to be the last few drivers to complete their fourth and final lap. Nathan Crook out of the final corner in the Porsche. No improvement as such yet by the look of it. Doesn't look like he's had enough in the tank this time around whether the circuit is getting hotter or colder I'm not sure 20 degrees track temp seems very cold for Brazil but then again it's early morning session here it's quarter past eight in the morning so the sun hasn't hit the circuit to heat it up yet no improvement there for Crook it's Christophe Demai in the BMW we were following him a little bit earlier he's cracked on here he's got two green sectors in the middle of the lap not sure if that's going to be an improvement or not though and we shall see does improve goes up to fifth fastest in his class and then we switch back to Jamal Gandor because the other car which was Simon Cheshire has decided to abandon his lap there's a couple of drivers that have only done three laps in the session but it seems like on the final attempt I mean to be fair the top three drivers Troy Dolinchek, Yanis Albert and Luke Lucchesi have all done three laps they've not done four and then they've pulled over and completed their session Jamal does another lap. Great looking and sounding car, that Mercedes. We've only got, what, I can see five, five Mercedes in the entire field. So barely 10% of the entire group are Mercedes drivers. So interesting, interesting. It used to be the go-to car. I remember when the GT3 mm. first came to iRacing when uh, I think it was back in 2017 I did a GT3 championship and it was just so so packed with Mercedes absolutely everywhere thank you to everybody that's tuned in so far by the way I hate that phrase tuned in but it's, it's got to be used uh, 36 of you apparently watching at the moment really do appreciate that guys and of course please do like and subscribe to Chaz Draycott Media as well put a lot of effort into these streams and Ed and I do a lot of time with researching and making sure that we get this as right as possible and I mean at the end of the day Ed we just enjoy ourselves up here mate don't we it's a, it's a good laugh doing this 
Yeah, definitely, of course, by subscribing. You are basically in the right place to see the future rounds of this championship. We are only here for rounds one and two tonight, but over the course of the coming months, we will be able to bring the broadcast for the remainder of the season. And what a season it's already looking like it's going to become because mm. of the closeness that we have in this qualifying session. Obviously, the top three in the elite class, except by less than a tenth of a second. Got the same for the Premier class, and then as well in the Evo class, it's ever so tight up there, and really it does make you wonder what we've gotten ourselves in for this season, Chaz. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got a lot to look at, definitely, but that's what keeps us entertained up here in the virtual commentary box. And to be fair, what's keeping us entertained right now is Jamal Gandor, Lebanese driver, just continuing on his run, just getting laps in, like you said, Ed, very rightly so. He's just using this as a bit of an extended practice session right now, isn't he, to get more laps in around this very, very difficult circuit. Yeah, it's a circuit that can punish you if you make the slightest mistake. So getting these practice laps in is just so important, especially for the start of the race. You do need to be aware, though, that sometimes you can over-practice, you can get in the head of just hot lapping, but mm. then all of a sudden when you've got other cars around you, it becomes almost alien to you lose that rhythm oh, he's heard so us. i think jamal gendor is, he's heard us he's, he's gotten gotten shy and decided to take a trip back into the pit so now the circuit will be eerily quiet and silent mm. for the next 50 seconds while we wait for <laughs> the session to tick over into the race this is what i was just going to explain before about having the drivers sort of in their own session here if we change from jamie reese to simon cheshire you can see the car is basically in the same spot ready to go out onto the circuit it's just that they are all in their own mini session so they're all sort of hidden away from each other we've got luke lacassi this might be an interesting uh, transition from uh, troy dolinshek to luke lacassi there you can see the minor differences oh boys different colored wheels <sighs> sort that out sunshine still great looking list of cars and drivers and to be fair amazing talent as well Troy Dolinchek who we have on pole position here is over 7,000 I rating and there's a massive amount of drivers in the field that are over the sort of two or 3,000 I rating mark mm. but what the guys have told us before is that you know the series does uh, appeal to newer drivers to the series as well and it aims to have a really friendly paddock and they absolutely do I've mm. been getting stuck in in the discord today offending people and having a, uh, a dig but getting involved in the banter and that's what it's all about Anyway, grid time now. Jesus, take a deep breath. Um, unfortunately, the text fading to black there needs to be sorted. I've gone through this with James James Bostock and, uh, and, and his admins, bless him, Alex Fretwell as well, um, trying to make sure that all of this is spot on. Like I say, it's round one, everybody. Give us time. We'll sort it. So, Troy Dolinchek and Yanis Albert on the front row. Luke Lucchesi and Gianni Terha on the second row. The grid Gianni fastest in his class in the Premier Division. Then it's Tristan Dino Brega with Christoph De Maia alongside him. Ryan Ottens and Tristan Engelstad. He's second in the Premier class. He lines up eighth on the grid. Paul Cowlishaw is in ninth place ahead of Alex Fretwell. And then we have Jean McLuhan in 11th place and Yian Stitchbury in 12th place on the sixth row. Then it's Jean Brayton back ahead of Matt Hoyland. Thomas Pugh and Marcel Brayton back. Then it's Stephen Donnelly and Nathan Crook. Dave Russell, who was in the YouTube chat before, is alongside Jamie Reese, and that's the top 20 done with. We then have Joe Shapara for JSD Racing Team, Jack Wyborn in 22nd, then it's Joe Glass and Scott Kostrick, the Scottish driver, in 24th. Matthew Jones and Simon Cheshire make up row 13 ahead of Javier Talavera with Matt Barnett in 28th. Then it's Jamal Gandor, who we've seen more of than anybody else tonight in 29th, then Robin Aston 30th. James Bostock is 31st with Gareth Newton, the fastest in the Evo division. He's ahead of Wesley Van Rens and Rob McKee. Then it's Stephen Cakebread and James Rankin. He is ranking in 36th place. Then we have Hussein Sarakardesla, I think it is. We have him 37th with Graham Matthew in 38th. Sean Clark and Kalen Bartlett round out the top 40. Alex Kernratz is 41st ahead of Stefan Jovanovic. Then it's Randy Ayres and John Ludbrook. Paul Robson and Danny Weir on the 23rd row of the grid. Russell Jack 47th. Alex Boniface 48th. Owen Seward 49th. Chris Keenan rounds out the top 50. Yes, really. Then Dennis Collar lines up in 51st place. Just as the field gets going and my frame rate dies here, Ed. What a great, great opportunity we have, though, for a fantastic race here tonight. So many cars, so many classes two half hour races with pit stops as well that's going to be one of the exciting features of this mm -hmm. yeah it is and thankfully we had a full formation lap because there were so many drivers i don't think we've got through them all before the start of the race 
It's time for the drivers to try and warm up the tyres if possible. Going through these corners though at the pace that the safety car, the pace car goes at, isn't really going to add any heat into them, no. sadly. Yanis Albert there right alongside Troy Dolinchek as he's getting his way through the final few corners now. You can see just how busy it is up in front of Gareth Newton. All of those cars, the big strong grid of 51 cars that we have here tonight. It's going to be so tricky for those guys in the midfield and towards the end as well. If there is an accident up ahead, they all need to slow right down. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of patience required in this one, but it's going to be an excellent show all the same. These guys have had a lot of practice, a lot of time to get ready for this. And as I'm sure you'll all agree, having this many cars on the circuit, it's going to drop the frame rate a bit, so I'll apologise in advance for that, everyone. But we're going to enjoy ourselves up here, and we're going to really hope that you enjoy yourselves in the chat as well. Let us know what you think, and of course, give us any predictions. But it's going to be Troy Dolinchek for RDSA Esports on the inside of the front row, Luke Lucchesi behind him. Then Tristan Dinabrega behind him. So the RDSA guys have three cars on the inside line. But as the lights come on, round one of the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championships fourth season from Interlagos gets underway and the engines scream into life. Now, it seems like quite the uh, spread further back in the field. Or is that just how many cars we've got on? Troy Dolinchek then leads them down into turn one. How's Gianni Terha getting on? Because let's not forget, he leads the Premier class and he's kept it nice and tidy through there, so has everybody else, actually. Really good, clean stuff by those guys in the opening moments. Goodness me, they've done so, so well, haven't they, through these opening corners, Ed? But look at how many of them there are. This is awesome stuff, isn't it? There's so many up in front as well. There's action going down through Decidio De Lago. Troy Dolinchek still out in front. Ahead of Yanis Albert, who sort of backed off a little bit. I think he was more covering Luke Lucchese rather than trying to attack Troy out in front. It's all oh, big incident there. Stephen Donnelly getting a significant hit. This was just at the exit of the Cedar de Lago. Oh, oh no. Oh dear, and is that... Jamal, that Jamal Gandor Jamal was involved. We seeing so much of. I might be seeing the end of the race already. Matt Hoyland's had a drama as well in the Porsche. Matt Hoyland's DXT Motorsports Porsche has lost its rear wing. It's gone into GT3 touring mode. And he's unfortunately had a spin and some contact somewhere by the look of it. He might have even been in the wall at some point. But it's Dolinchek leading the elite class. Teha still leads in Premier and Newton still leads in Evo. So our class leaders have held on to their respective leads. I want to see what on earth happened to Stephen Donnelly to begin with. I think Xavier Talvera has been involved in this. I spoke too soon when we were talking about how clean oh. they were and then it was just a little bit of Oh, there's drama in front. Out in front. There was drama actually ahead. I saw the stricken Mercedes being collected, and I think Jamal Gondor had his own incident later oh, on. And no. Did the right thing by staying stationary, but cars trying to climb up the inside, go around the outside. It was such a tricky point because he's right on the apex there. Yeah, that's one of the tricky bits, though, is, you know, it's all well and good, the driver's sitting still, and that's the best thing to do, as you rightly mentioned, Ed. But it's the fact that the people around that will also try and avoid incident as well and have an off as Gareth... Uh, sorry, not try and have an off. They'll try and get out of the way. Gareth Newton, the class leader in the Evo class, has had a spin. He's just lost the class lead now, and Wesley Van Rens has taken that... Whoa, a bit of a wiggle in the background there by Randy Ayres and number 67 Porsche. Get as close as he can to the Audi. They're insistent on moving over on each other a little bit. He's going to chuck it down the inside of the 55 machine of Danny Weir. Danny's pushed slightly wide. Nothing too untoward with that. But very close racing all the same. Let's have a look, though, at what happened to Gareth Newton here, Ed. As I see, in towards the Senna S Turn 1. It just over rotates too oh. much speed on the way in and the Lamborghini really doesn't like it if you over speed through the corner it is one of the more oversteery of the GT3 cars and sadly that's been his undoing just you see it turns in it's a bit too much steering lock on and that causes the rear to break away and it immediately tries to recover it but as soon as the rear end breaks away in this thing it's so hard to regain it yeah, it's such a shame, but it's one of those things that usually it happens on the downshift as well. I was quite surprised to see it sort of just float its way around in gear. Uh, Matthew Barnett's had a spin, unfortunately, but we look here at Gianni Terha, who currently leads the Premier class. Fretwell's done the fastest lap of the race in his class, though. But now Engelstad is right behind, and Engelstad is actually going to potentially get the move done on his teammate here. Same team, just different cars. 
Looks like Teha has had a problem. They've got their names very handily on the windscreens. Alex Fretwell's in that as well in the Ferrari. He wants to try and take this class lead. Side by side with the Mercedes through Decina De Lago. Around the outside goes Fretwell. It's got his name all over that. Never mind, just on the windscreen banner. The 296. Not quite got the grunt of the Mercedes up the hill, has it? No, he's holding it to the inside. Great stuff. Is he going to be able to just swoop all the way past? We'll have a look. It's vibrating its way around the outside as the Mercedes. He's there somewhere, Sunshine, but the Porsche in front is the one to focus on. And yeah, Fretwell's actually got it done. Great driving there. Very close stuff. This is the man that leads now in the Evo class, as I'm afraid. Nathan Crook's had a drama. Crook and... Oh, there's another car off with him there. The 265. Jamie Rees, I think, having a moment there for the Alpha 1 Esports. Yes, he is. Rejoining back onto the circuit, thankfully. Like anyone else. It's actually Tristan Engelstad has been overtaken by Yayan Stitchbury throughout all of the uh, dramas as well. Up at the oh. sort of high end of the field. And I think it looked like he cut the corner a little bit there. And oh, I think he just took a little bit too much into the behind the car. Didn't quite slow down enough. Yeah, and as you rightly said, Engelstad has been overtaken. Stitchbury's gone through. Now they're in different classes to each other. Obviously, they still want to try and race one another to catch up with their classmates, which are separated. It's interesting as well that the grid is not split up into individual classes. I love that because it means that you really have to focus on your overall position in the order. But we are already somehow five minutes through the race here, Ed. And it is Dolinschek, Albert and Lucchesi in the elite class. Terha, Fretwell and Engelstad in Premier. Van Rens, Bartlett and Matthew in the Evo class. The lead battle for the Premier class is right here. This is Gianni Tanher, but if you look behind him, sorry, Terha, not Tanher. Alex Fretwell in the Ferrari. He is pressuring to try and take that away from this Porsche, but three different manufacturers in the top three in this class, three in the Evo class, but it's Porsche dominated so far in the Elite class, although you do have Yanis Albert in the Sumo Racing Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. Yanis actually has appeared in one of my Rocket League tournaments before, so it's good to know that he's not only good at driving cars that crash into footballs, but he's also very good at driving cars that don't crash into each other as well here on iRacing. Good to see. It's uh, at least a familiar face for us. Mm. Got new drivers to get to grips with and learn sort of their driving styles because you can see from the commentary box how drivers operate the way they like to approach the race as if they what strategies they like to opt for as well certain drivers prefer to pit early some drivers prefer to pit later some just do it basically on a whim of where they find themselves in the races looking up the inside just for a moment there was Luke Lucchese for our RDSA Esports oh. trying to make it a RDSA Esports 1 and 2 Good sweeping his way around the outside through Curva de Sol has he got the run? Yes, he has. And Yanis Albert trying to defend the inside through Decidio de Lago, actually lifting off. And I think letting Luke Lucchese have the position. Maybe he's hoping that Luke will help maybe Yanis to catch up to the lead of the race. We'll see. Yeah, interesting. I think he had a little bit of a wobble. And then when you get on that kerb on the inside, it's so easy to unsettle the car, especially because you're on the power around there as well. You've got consistent steering lock on so difficult to get that right there's just been a change of position here Simon Cheshire has just gone past Joe Glass clear as day Joe Shapiro is looking down the inside as well now in the 131 Mercedes lovely move by the JSD racing team machine very striking black and green livery oh it looked like it got a little bit out of shape for him there and now Joe's got to try and get back past those guys behind them we've got Robin Aston he's got Jamie Reese with him Matthew Jones in there as well love the livery on that glass set racing car Really cool. Looks like the old John Player special liveries, doesn't it, on these machines? Because it's, I think it says JSB on the top instead. Oh, no, it's, it doesn't say JSB at all, Chaz. It's his race number. For crying out loud. Still, great-looking livery. That's the moral of the story there. Uh, Danny Weir and John Ludbrook are right together. Sixth and seventh in their class. Clearly fans of bright colours, these guys, or whoever designed their liveries. <laughs> But look at how the field is, I'm not going to say spread, there's nothing spread about that, and there's definitely something spread about my vocal cords right now, but if you look at this, never mind, <laughs> there you go, look how much the field fills the circuit, I definitely need to work on the positioning of said track map, thank you, however, boy is it packed around this place, and that's one of the best things about championships like this, we are constantly reminding you that it's all about having so much to look at all at once but we really are going to be spoilt for choice on what battles we look at here uh, we've unfortunately got Sarah Kadesla 
in the pits. Not sure if he's actually trying to sort of use that to some strategical advantage. Maybe just get out of some traffic early on, I would have thought, Ed, because there's constant fights going on, and not always with people in your own class. It'd be very easy to lose time, wouldn't it? Although it does say Sarah Kadesla has gone off on off at some point, so let's have a look. Let's see what he's done here. Ooh, it's just over the curb, isn't it? Just a little bit of the curb through Faradura, and then... Oof. Very well to get onto the brakes and try and avoid any contact with... Who was that that was streaming past? I'd love to pretend that I knew. Is that maybe Chris Keenan? We'll try a look. I, think I saw the Belgian. I saw the Belgian flag. It was a seventy-six. Yeah. Of oh, yep, Chris Keenan. Oh, you're too good for this. Handy to have the uh, the Belgian flag on the wing end plates. There it makes it very distinctive to see who was who. Considering Chris is the only Belgian in the race as well. So yeah, fair play. Yeah. You don't get paid enough, Ed. James, <laughs> I'll send you an invoice. Um, Thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> um, Yanis Albert has lost another couple of places here, by the way. Um, Tristan Dino Brega and Christoph De Maij have both gone past him. Now he's not going to be able to see where he's going because he's got the tower block of a BMW in front of him. We've got inline six versus V10. I hate the wheels on Yanis's car, and I think he knows that I hate pink wheels, so I think he's done that just to annoy me. But still, the 221 machine dropping a couple of places. Let's see how Tristan got through just earlier. Oh, has he maybe got a slowdown penalty? Not sure. Keep our eye on the Lamborghini here. Is he just going to clip the grass? Oh, dearie me. Way too close to the back of Lucchesi, and he has to dive out of the way. So, unfortunate that for Yanis. I remember watching the uh, the final round of the season last time out at Bathurst, and he had a couple of incidents early on, did Yanis? So, he's definitely not one that's scared of danger. Look at this train of cars, Ed. Ryan Ottens, Cowlishaw, Gianni Terha, Alex Fretwell, Yian Stitchbury, and Tristan Engelstad all involved in this as we look back from the Alfa One Esports Porsche. Great mix of manufacturers in there as well. We've yeah, got Lambos, Ferraris say, and Mercs. You wouldn't know that this is a primarily Porsche-dominated series, would you, by the cars we have in this shot following Ryan Ottens. Currently in sixth place with a huge swathe of cars in behind. Paul Collishaw, the Lamborghini right behind him, is for class position. And then the next couple of cars, Jenny Taha, X Fretwell in Porsches and Ferraris respectively in the Premier class, so just not quite a class position, but still obviously trying to get the most out of the races as possible. I like to see that the drivers aren't afraid to fight intra-class battles. They're like they're quite happy just to go for pure track position, not really worrying too much about who's in what class. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's what's exciting about a series like this, because you will always get a mix of that. You'll get the drivers that do want to defend their class position and some that maybe defend a position over drivers in a higher up class than them. Or you'll also get drivers that really don't give one and they'll fight anybody that comes near them. Uh, you've got James Rankin just behind at Wesley Van Rens here. Uh, actually, yeah, sorry, it is James in the Porsche. Uh, who was he moving over for there, actually? Was that? Was Wesley Van Rens, I think. Oh, Wesley's in the Ferrari. Oh, so he was moving over for a, Oh, that's that Stephen Donnelly in the Mercedes. So ah. Stephen is, to be fair, in the, uh, the Premier class. So maybe he's just proven that he's quicker and at this point... Well, Rankin doesn't feel like... Although Rankin is in the same class as him. Oh, I don't know. Mm. It's not for track position, though, I think. So yeah, he's, he's, down, yeah, so yeah Donnelly the is why. the last car running, unfortunately, for him at the moment. But I think uh, maybe Rankin knew that he was quicker, so he didn't want to fight it. Speaking of fighting it, though, a similarly coloured car, Randy Ayres. He's getting Randy with Sean Clark just in front of him here in the number 68 Porsche. Looks down the inside. Oh, goodness me. Splitter, scrapes, diffuser. Carbon fibre is expensive, you know, Randy. But the American chasing the Brit for Arc Motorsports. He's also got company in the form of Dennis Kohler behind him as well in the very shiny DXT Motorsports car. I think a lot of their guys run very similar liveries, just with different mm. uh, different coloured highlights. Although, to be fair, he's running the low downforce spec as Ayres throws it down the inside of Clark. Clark just holds on for now. And gets a very good run, actually, on the exit of the corner. And look at that, Kohler's coming through around the outside now. In this mini Porsche Cup. Oh, there's contact. Randy's off and in the wall. And that's a big old hit. Oh, and Randy's going to spin on the way to the pit lane just in front of the Audi that's trying to come into the pits. Oh, Randy. Whew. I mean, it was kind of a good decision in a way because he got himself out of the way of the pit lane. But goodness me, what on earth was that about? That was no, terrifying. That was, that was really worrying. I think it was just an issue of maybe not quite holding the brakes. It's difficult to... Exactly. 
It's happened. So Dennis Collett oh, around great the run. outside. Really nice run there. And then leaving plenty of space at the oh, moment. Oh, just cuts left. Just, just cuts a little bit left. Yeah. But to be fair, I think he was anticipating Randy to be sticking more to the inside line. To yeah. be going for the shortest run possible. And then That's a real a sudden, shame, though. It's just one of the like, sort of inconsequential bit of contact, but I guess looked from on board probably more than it would have done from outside, and that's how they put an end to Randy Ayres' race um, into the pits. And I'm not sure how long the tow to the pit lane will be, depending on obviously where it deems him to be past potentially past the pit entry. Mm. That could be a very long tow to the pits. Yeah, it's a real shame that, real real shame indeed. But these things happen at a circuit like this. It's definitely a track of many racing lines in a lot of places. You do often see a bit of a conflict of racing lines that causes bits of contact here and there. First round of the season as well. Drivers are still getting used to each other, I suppose. Alex Fretwell's definitely used to the back of Gianni Terhaar's Porsche by now. Wants to put it down the inside. But no, nothing this time round on board with the Ferrari. It's quite handy, actually, if you don't want anyone to know what your inputs look like, because the uh, the strap on the Ferrari perfectly sort of covers the left-hand side of the shop, but I thought I'd keep it in. It looks quite artsy. Still, Fretrell running really well at the moment. Second place, ninth overall in the race. The current leader in the Evo class sits 20th overall. That's Wesley Van Rens. Troy Dolinchek has a very healthy lead at the moment, though, Ed. Currently running with 3.2 seconds lead. And he's not really got any traffic to worry about either. There's a car right in front of him there, which is the 21 of Owen Seward. But there's not a huge pack for him to worry about at this stage. The South African doing a great, great job. Yeah, seems to be going strong at this moment in time. So got some traffic up in front, but I think it shouldn't be too tricky for him to navigate. Oh, was I say that, though? Oh. I didn't see that Seward was trying to get out of the way. But don't check. I think anticipating that... So it was going to stay on his line. Both of them basically made the same movement to the outside of the circuit, and that could have ended in tears hadn't Troy not slammed on the brakes mid-corner. Yeah, very, very scary moment indeed, but it happens when you're going through uh, through lap traffic, I suppose. It's mm. it's a risky form of motorsport. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was, I was worried there, Chaz. We both know about my commentator's curse. I didn't want it to oh, kick don't. in this early on in a new season. Uh, don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. For those of you that haven't ever heard Ed commentate before, he has the most powerful commentator's curse I've ever seen in my life. We could just go, oh, Tristan, for example, and then all of a sudden Tristan's car would explode. It's uh, it's quite terrifying, actually, Ed's commentator's curse. Honestly, it's remarkable. So we're hoping not to catch any drivers in all of that yeah. this season. We're hoping for uh, Ed's going to be a good boy, aren't you? I'm going to try my best to be well behaved. I can't promise anything because I don't even know when it's going to happen. That could just, I can forget about my commentator's curse completely. It could be a few months before it's kicked in and then all of a sudden I'll say one thing and then instantly something something will happen to that driver, unfortunately. So I'll, I'll do what I can, Chas. I can't promise anything, <laughs> but I'll, I'll be as good as I can be. And that's all that anyone can really ask and expect from me. Absolutely. The invoice is already paid anyway. Yeah, you've already paid me, so that's fine. I can, I can be fair, be as rude as I want. Maybe not actually <laughs> on live broadcasters. <laughs> the Linchek now coming in to the pits. They can try everything's nice and clear above board. All the drivers doing what they need to do. They're one mandatory pit stop, and they are up to take it roughly the midway point of the race. Yeah, just before, actually, which is quite interesting. Simon Cheshire has continued on for MRC 495. He leads the race now as well as the Premier Class. Around turn three he goes. Lovely lovely sounding machine the Porsche but Troy Dolinchek returns back out onto the circuit with clear air around him and two of his teammates following on Christoph Demai in the BMW has Yanis Albert next to him though Ooh, Yanis not quite able to get through though he's uh, he's actually a little bit far back to take advantage of that so now the Lamborghini tucks back up behind the BMW and tries to fight on Although, yeah, sorry, Ed, I, I said just short of halfway because I was looking at the top of our timing software that tells us how long of the race mm. has gone, not how long is left. Just over 11 minutes, though. At the, where's that gone? It's flown by, hasn't it? It really has. As some of the drivers now, I think a majority of the field has actually made their mandatory pit stop of the race. A few of them are saying that they've made a pit stop, but they've only been in the pit lane for three seconds, which makes me think that it was potentially sort of the 
iRacing service been a bit confused when the drivers do cross over the pit lane entry mm. on their way sort of towards the start and finish line. Yeah, sometimes it uh, it does get a little bit confused, but that's all good. All is fine. Just ride on board now with the Lambo. Up through the gears, sounding fantastic. Sumo racing machine. See over 200 kilometers an hour, changing up into fifth gear. Screaming down towards the first corner. We've got the battle for the lead here. Fretwell is actually ahead of Terhar in the Premier class now. Van Rens is looking quite safe with a 2.1 second lead over Cake Bread, though, but you never know. He could potentially catch up with him. Actually, the gap is getting smaller now as well. Cake Bread is really flying in this BMW. It's a very striking livery. Not sure what colour dicing they've used on it, but it must be uh, pretty potent <laughs> stuff to be that brightly coloured. But yeah, Stephen is definitely chasing. 1.2 seconds now, the gap. So it's fluctuating a little bit, but we'll go back to this as well because Simon Cheshire in the Porsche has just come out of the pits not long ago. There he is, actually, side by side with his teammate, Jack Wyborn. And Simon's just going to slot in between here as they've got Dave Russell behind. Dave popped into the chat earlier on to come and say hello. And he's now fighting away for fifth position in the Premier class. Trying his way around the outside. Now, Cheshire's got a great opportunity here to sort of act as a rear gunner to his teammate, Jack Wyborn. They both want to move forward together, obviously. But nothing going yet. As all oh, move further up, Ed. Yanis Albert gets through. Yeah, I'm Christoph Demai. And that's an area where... You don't really expect the moves to be made, is it? In the middle of that tight and twisty technical middle sector. That's how well, though. Getting the move done. And I think able to pick up a little bit of a slipstream from Tristan to Nobrega up ahead. But it is, well, domination by RDSA Esports at the moment, isn't it? First, second and third, all held by those three Porsches. Yeah, they're doing this. Christoph job. Demai fighting back. Look how close they're getting, Chaz, into towards turn one, the CNRS. Yanis Albert holds firm, but is he going to be compromised on his run out of the corner by going so defensive? Might be at risk coming down now into the CD Delago down the Retro Posta. Just creeping through on the right-hand side is Christoph Demai trying to go all the way around the outside. Now, that's possibly the better place to be here because Yanis is going to have to keep it tight to that inside line. Nearly does it, but no... Christoph can't quite get through. He's almost leaning on the back of the Lamborghini. Boy, they are close together. Boy, they are close together. He's trying to just tuck himself into the rear arch of the car to keep Yanis on a tight line. But Yanis has done a great job there, actually, to not just hold said tight line, but also keep the pace up as well. Christoph's going to be pushing like mad to try and get by. The Lamborghini looks so small from up here in this tower block of a car that is the BMW M4. There's been a little battle going on, actually, inside the Evo class. We just need to nip down to that. It was actually not even for class position either. Rob McKee and Matt Hoyland have swapped places. Now, these guys are both in separate classes. Hoyland's 15th in his class, and Rob McKee just in front of him in the DXT Motorsports Porsche. Actually, they're both DXT Motorsports. Sorry, this is what I mean. Mm. Same livery, just different colours. <laughs> really does Something to get used to. The look of the car completely, doesn't it? The mm. change of the uh, livery. And also, the DXT Motorsports, The I think the Academy drivers both have very similar sort of style of liveries, but very different colour schemes. You've got Danny yes. and this lovely sort of sort of cyan, like like sort of turquoisey blue fading into a purple and then a pink at the rear. And then his teammate, Alex Boniface, is in a sort of more like orange to sort of a blue to orange yeah. fade. It's great. <laughs> it's top draw stuff. Uh, we've got Jamie Reese trying to, well, hold off at the moment. Nathan Crook, actually, in the 127 machine. Nathan for Lud Crook Racing trying to go right around the outside into turn one. And this is one of the best things about multi-class racing as well. When it's based on sort of on paper ability, it's not always all said and done, is it? These guys are battling for 21st and 22nd places outright in the race. Uh, currently, Nathan in his class is outside of the top 10, so too is Jamie. So they're just having a battle for overall points positions here. We do need to go back to this battle, though. The premier battle for the lead has been going on all race long. Fretwell still just in front of Gianni Teha, and it's just been a right good ding dong this. Don't forget, we've got another race coming up after this, everybody. We've got a couple of minutes warm-up session between, but we've got another one of these coming up. It's going to be great. Yeah, it really is, and I think the race is coming thick and fast. I don't know how long they have between the races, but I think it's only like five minutes for them to decompress mm. after all of the action, so... It's going to be from 
one dramatic 30 minutes into another pretty quickly. Is that a roll? Trying to defend as he can from Jay Taha. He's got two quad dash racing cars in behind him. Although Tristan Engels, that is just a little bit too far to really be a factor in this battle for the Premier Class lead. Yeah, the two of them mighty close to each other, but yeah, it's not. Uh, oh, goodness me, I thought he was going to just clip the back of him there. Just got really, <laughs> see, really close all of a sudden. See the individual LEDs of the headlights there as they got so close. Yeah, very, very close. Still. This is great entertainment so far from the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championship. Another quick shout to our championship sponsors, Keenan Eco Energy. Thank you very much. Medius as well. Kame and AB Designs. Support for the championship will never go unrecognised. And we hope you're all enjoying the show here on Chaz Draycott Media. Chaz Draycott and Ed May up here in the virtual commentary box from Interlagos. And, I mean, I'm loving it, Ed, so far. It's just constant battles constant cars everywhere all around the circuit it's just awesome to look at isn't it absolutely awesome and you know with cars like this that are so exciting it's just a great sight and spectacle having gt3s on the channel at last yeah at last it's been a little while i think since we've last had gt3s at least the both of us in the comps box on gt3s it must have been a few years now yeah it's been great to have them back onto the iRacing service and these cars are ones that have the new weather system added on. We haven't really mentioned that all broadcast long, even though it's the hot topic in iRacing at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. This is something that could maybe come into play further down. I don't think they've... Uh, actually, no. I think I remember seeing a message, not to shoot it down too quickly, that uh, they were going to do no sort of change in the weather system for this season, but potentially in future seasons. We'll have to see. I think it's one of those things you have to just test how it goes on and uh, we're going to look back from See another ferrari here by the way Ed. Yeah. sorry mate from the escuderia panthera car because stephen Capebred, the privateer is all over the back of van rens mm. for this class lead yeah let's go ahead probably going to see how it goes in officials before they decide yes. to go for a competitive <laughs> league racing but mm. we'll be able to in the meantime we traded some nice uh, dry track running and some excellent battles as a result with like you say wesley van rens having to defend now for the next four minutes and how long is left of that final lap from Stephen Cakebread, who is really piling the pressure on. Backing off a little bit through the centre, more focusing on the exit through Curva de Sol. Looking for a run down the Retro Posta into De Cida de Lago, but not close enough to make any moves yet. However, we did see how close they were coming out of the final few corners. Still not over yet. Robin Aston right in the thick of the battle here. Porsche just tucked in behind the Mercedes of Joe Sparza. Oh no, we've got a car off. It's Joe Glass, unfortunately. He's well, he's on the grass, not the glass. Depends where you're from, I suppose. But the Glass Tech racing machine cleaned off and back on the road. Not quite sure what happened there. I think he's just had a spin all on his own. Let's have a look. So the Porsche is actually quite uh, it's quite good at spinning on its own very similar to obviously being in a, a mid-engine car like your Lamborghinis and your Ferraris isn't it but the engine so far back you get that pendulum effect from it don't you yeah and again it's why it's so difficult to regain it once the rear end loses, it loses traction and look at the two teammates battling away this isn't in the script certainly no, no team orders for MRC 495 as Simon Cheshire goes up into fourth position in the premier class David Russell is getting a good little view of the two teammates wrestling up in front. <laughs> Jack Wyborn loses out to Simon up ahead. They're just probably waiting in the wings to see if the two teammates come to blows and actually give him any avenues through. So he has a nice little run here on Jack Wyborn, but Jack's shown him to the outside through Ferradura. There's no real moves to be made as a result. No, he's not quite been able to... Uh to get through that time round. He didn't get enough of an overlap on the way in, really, for it to uh, worry Jack too much. He was just sort of covering his backside a little bit there. Where's Jack? We've got a battle going on in the Evo class here. This is John Ludbrook, Caelan Bartlett, and Rob McKee just behind. Rob's actually had a bit of an off on the previous lap. We'll have a quick look at it. Sorry, Rob. And I think we've seen this one before, haven't we? Through the downshifts, up over the crest. Car just gradually breaks away. Oh, it's such a frustrating incident to have. Just waiting for that weight to come back around. And, oh, Caitlin Butler has just actually gone off in the same place, actually. 
funnily enough, in the Aura Motorsports Omega car. Paul Cowlishaw's had a problem as well. We're going to be going through all sorts of replays here. Sorry. Paul's Sumo Racing Lambo. Oh, is he just going to lose it on the... Uh, yeah. The Astro there is a nightmare. And look, he's just had a spin. And Luckily, he was sort of towards the inside of the circuit. We've got Boniface off the circuit now as well. All the drama's happening here, Ed, with the last few minutes left to go, but... At the very front of the field, Dolinchek still holds on to that class lead. I would say a lot of the mistakes are as a result of fatigue for racing flat out for 30 minutes, but I hope not because they've got another race mm. coming up after this one. So hopefully they've still got enough left in the tank to do it all over again. Dolinchek, like you say, is been coming around for this lap and one more. His teammate Luke Lucchese further behind him. And Tristan Gunnarega with Yanis Alberta company, but I think he's built up a sufficient gap to Yanis where it, they, basically all of the RDSA esports drivers don't need to worry about the Sumo Racing Lamborghini. He's been trying to hound them down for the majority of the races. Like Fretwell, he's well, hopefully not going to fret too much about the <laughs> assault from behind because if so, he's going to be in for a very long final lap. Absolutely. Now, the interesting uh, little dynamic that we've got going on here is Yayan Stitchbury, or Yayan Stitchbury, just in front of these guys. He's in the class ahead in that Mercedes, but Alex could potentially get held up by him a little bit here if he's just quicker around a lap. So Gianni Tehar has got a great opportunity to try and close in. And look at how closing in on the... <laughs> Words fell out of my mouth then, Ed. I thought we were just about to go flying into the back of the Ferrari, but look at Gianni now. He's really throwing himself at the back of that 296. I know it's ugly, Gianni, but flipping X sunshine. It doesn't need any home improvements, but look, that's the key indicator there that he knows he's getting to Fretwell. Fretwell deciding to defend. Goes to the sort of middle of the road as well. He doesn't give Gianni anywhere to go. There's a great battle going on back here, by the way, with Kostrick, Reese, and Crook. These guys having a right old ding-dong in the Porsches. Okay, three wide. Yeah, I'm thinking oh, the same. Dear. Oh, Crook, you don't need to do it. It's Nathan Crook. He's not scared, is he, Nathan Crook? We've seen this from him all race, and oh, he's just causing his own problems. Oh, we saw it earlier. He went a little bit too hot down the inside to try and make a move. This is the battle for the Premier Class lead, by the way. It's nearly done for them. They've only got a few more corners yet to go, and Gianni's throwing absolutely everything at it. Tries around the outside. That doesn't work this time round, but we need to go to the front because to start the season in the best possible way, Troy Dolinchek for RD RDSA Esports takes the first win of the season from Luke Lacassi and Tristan Dino Brega. Look at that. One, two, three for RDSA Esports. Next up, Yanis Albert. It looks like Fretwell has held on just enough to beat Gianni Terhar to the line. What about Engelstad? Engelstad's going to try and beat his teammate to the line here as well. It might be a photo finish between the two with a bit of slipstream. No, it's not. But we then need to go further back again because Wesley Van Rens, don't worry, that's not four position behind him. That's Matt Hoyland in the DXT Motorsports car. Stephen Catebread is two cars back in the BMW there, so it looks like Wesley's all good here. He just needs to guide the Scuderia Panthera car around the final corners. And to be fair, John Ludbrook, by the way, in third place in this class, has gained 14 places where he started. Looking for the biggest mover in the field, and that is him, actually. 14 places, but Wesley Van Rens wins in the Evo class for round one of the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championship. Stephen Cakebread finishes second, and third place goes the way of John Ludbrook for Ludcrook Racing, just ahead of Rob McKee. Matthew Jones in there with them as well. Wow, great first race to start the season, but what about these boys, Ed? What about these boys, the RDSA Esports guys? What a fantastic start to the campaign for them. A 1-2-3 and a flying formation lap on the way in to celebrate it as well. You've got to love a bit of that. Yeah, that's the dream start for the evening, isn't it, for RDSA Esports? Making it a lockout of the podium. A serious benchmark that they've set down to the rest of the field. Yanis Alba, I mean, he's put up a great fight, but I just don't think he had enough with him to stick out the just constant assault from RDSA over the course of the race. No, it was very, very lively, very, very busy. Uh, we are going to go over the results of race one, so you'll have to just give us a moment here. <laughs> uh, what we'll do, actually, uh, it's coming up as heat results like this, which I find very, very strange. I do apologise for this. Not quite sure why it's bringing us 
just that many. Uh, what we'll try and do is if we go to the elite class, it should give us a lot more than that. But why is it? <laughs> okay. I've never seen that before, Ed, have you? I mm, can't say I have either, no. <laughs> it's, uh... What on earth is that about? Very strange. That is very strange. Just the six shown for us here. I wonder if that's carried over. I'm going to say this out loud. I wonder if that's carried over from the CDM Speedway Super League where we get six cars in a final. Maybe. I wonder. Maybe yes. I do wonder. That is, that, this, that will, very weird. this will be fixed, everybody. I do apologise for this. But it's Troy Dallinshek that takes the win from Luke Lucchesi. Tristan Dino Brega makes it a 1-2-3 for RDSA Esports. Great result for them. Yanis Albert finishes in fourth ahead of Christophe Demai. And then Ryan Ottens finishes in sixth position. It won't actually let me scroll either. That's very frustrating. I do apologise, everyone. I'm going to try and figure this one out. I do apologise. This is not good. This is this is not to Chaz's usual standard. I'm not happy about that. But it must be from the uh, mm. from the Super League because we have six car races. So all it's done is just show us the top six and that's it. So, yeah, I do apologise. It's uh, very, very weird sort of how it's decided to do that. Obviously, with our live timing software, it has some quirks to it that are very difficult to, I guess, iron mm. out. <laughs> it likes to sort itself. Have we, have we managed to... Well, it? no, now they're down no, there. No, now they're, they're hidden up. <laughs> they're a little bit shy. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry, everyone. We'll do this on the fly and see what we can get working. We've sort of got that going. I know that didn't go well at all. I'm not sure if Matt Hoyland's on about his race or whether he's on about uh, my uh, <laughs> my <laughs> results sheet. Uh, we've got Jamie Reese in there anyway. He's in 12th position, so we've got the top 12. You, uh, Yian Stitchbury, I'll get his name right at some point. Uh, Jean McLuhan next up. Uh, Jean Breitenbeck next up with Paul Colashaw finishing the top 10. Thomas Pugh and then Jamie Reese finishing in 12th. It will still not let me scroll, I'm afraid, everyone, so we may have to uh, sack off the results for a minute. I do apologise. We have a warm-up session going on, though, Ed. Not the longest session as far as I remember, but just a couple of minutes for the drivers to sort of readjust to their conditions, let's say. Yeah, they don't have the most time in the world, do they, to really get accustomed after that very dramatic first race of the evening. So, uh, drivers have two more minutes before we get right back up into the final race of the evening. Obviously, with the 12 top 12 positions sort of inverted, means there could be a few more dramatic moments. But we know that how good um, RDSA racing were, and I, I really think that they could be on for another, at least a race victory for one of them, maybe even a podium lockout again. Yeah, you never know. You never know, mate. It could be uh, could be a, a solid run through for them to, to get the positions they need, but it's going to be difficult because, I mean, the quality of the field that we've got here is absolutely amazing, really amazing. And what's great about it as well is, like I said before, you know, it appeals to drivers that are new to this, drivers that have not done it before, and drivers that are very experienced. You know, I said earlier we've got drivers in here that are 600 I rating. We've got drivers that are 7,000 I rating, but it's still... It applies to everybody. They can all enjoy themselves. There's always someone to race. That's the key point I'm getting at here. You know, there's. It, I mean, much like me, I, I'm always at the back of the field, so it's always lovely to uh, have someone to battle with. But these guys have got the same, haven't they? Yeah, they do. And it's also good for some of the lower class drivers to learn from the quicker drivers as well. I think that's the best way to do it, is be in the session with them, see the lines they take, be around the circuit as they are around you. And you can learn so much just by watching and trying to follow their lines through. Yeah, definitely. And this is a circuit as well that if you've not got much experience around here at Interlagos, it is one of the most difficult circuits to try and sort of figure out because there's a lot of late apexes and a lot of long sweeping corners where you have to adjust part way round. Well, I'll tell you what, everyone, I'm sweating buckets at the moment. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves as well. The heat of... Uh, the Brazilian weather has definitely not gotten to the drivers or the circuit, but it's gotten to me up here in the virtual commentary box. And the, I believe, 51 car field will all be back out on the circuit once again in just a moment. Now, we're told by Martin Kenyon, race two always gets a bit leery, and he's not wrong. We've seen it many a time before, Ed, no matter what championship you're in. It is always a Larry encounter. Uh, the top 12 on the grid have been reversed, so it's now Jean Breitenbach on pole position, 
and it's Jean McLuhan alongside him. Tristan Engelstad third, Gianni Terha starts on the second row with him. Alex Fretwell, he's hoping to continue that battle ahead of Yayan Stitchbury. Ryan Ottens and Christophe Demai make up row four. Then it's Yanis Albert in ninth. He's probably going to be hoping to make up for what uh, little mistakes he made in the first race with Tristan Dino Brega next to him on the fifth row. Luke Lucchesi and race one winner Troy Dolinshek next up and we will filter through the rest of the grid. It's going to be the same as the finishing order that we had before. It's a good chance for you all to get an idea of the results now that they wouldn't scroll through earlier. I do apologise for that massively, everybody. Um, I think it's just it's carried over the sort of preset from my own championship where we have six car heats at the end of a night. But what a massive, brilliant grid we've got, Ed. And to be fair, you know, I'm touching wood when I say this, but it was... 99% clean in that one. There wasn't any silly moves or any silly mistakes or anything. Everyone seemed to have so much respect for each other in that race. Yeah, and I was really impressed by it, especially how they navigated turn one on the colder tyres, brakes definitely not up to temperature as well. The way they navigated that was really, really impressive to see them get through without any significant incident. Obviously, there was a little bit more of a drama later on, a couple of corners down the line going down through the Sea de Lago, but by and large, it was a really, really good, respectful affair. And fingers crossed, touch wood, we get more of the same in the final race. But we know that the drivers might be pushing a little bit harder, knowing that they don't need to necessarily worry about if they get in an incident. Oh, that means that my second race is going to be out of the way, because this is basically a final chance for them to score points this evening. Definitely is. We've got the field rolling now. Jean Brayton back starts on pole position. But if we look all the way from maybe back here, Danny Weir... You can see just how far back these guys are. And they really did fill the circuit in the previous race. So I'm excited to see how well the guys manage traffic. That wasn't too much of an issue last time around, but we do have endurance races in the championship. So we alternate from two 30-minute races with a pit stop to an hour race with pit stops included as well. So that's our usual bread and butter with the GT4 championships that we commentate on, Ed. But I don't know how to call this one. Any quick suggestions or uh, not even suggestions, just predictions? I think Yanis Albert is going to be right on it at the very start. We saw how he was at the start of that first race. I think we're going to see more of the same from that very brightly coloured Lamborghini at the beginning of this second race. Here we go then. The field forms up to the start finish line some drivers trying to get a decent run and popping out but round two of the evolution sim racing gt3 championship from interlagos gets underway and straight away jean McLuhan, american driver nips down to the inside line to try and get a run there's a look down the inside from yanis albert and i don't think he's helped himself actually that time round ed because he squeezed himself in and christophe de and the french driver's gone around oh there's a mercedes around in the middle the Mercedes is around, Ryan Ottens is involved in that, the triple two car was in there and oh goodness me, there's more contact on the exit, race one winner is involved, race one winner is out of this one by the look of it, is he? No. Goodness, still Troy, carry yeah, on. Dolinshek is still through but oh goodness me, oh it was a big hit in the background by the 14 Porsche, that's John Ludbrook, he's had a colossal amount of contact, just, everyone was just trying to avoid weren't they and they just kept then moving in towards each other unfortunately. It just kept going. I think they maybe took it with a little bit too much pace. If they slowed it down and tried to avoid it, maybe a slower pace, that might have been a little bit cleaner, but I guess just everyone's eagerness to get through and see the incident as a chance to make up some quick positions. Sadly, to block people out of the action. Journey to Hart. Sort of benefit from that game position up into third place, currently leading the Premier class. Oh no! Oh dearie me, big incident there. That's Jack Wyborn getting his tent into the barriers. Careful with the rejoin, staying away from the apex, but, but like a hefty hit in that rear end is not playing ball at all. He needs to get out of the way as soon as possible and potentially oh, take a trip no. into the bits because that car is going to cause a second incident and it already has done. That was, that was Owen. Clark. It was like Owen Seward, sorry. Owen involved. I don't think it was at a high speed, so the car seemed fine, but that could have been. A real nasty hit. Yanis Albert now into the pits along with Christopher Tamai. Several cars making trips into the pit lane. It was the triple two Mercedes of Yane Stitchbury, I think, where the incident started. I think he went around in front of everybody. He was the first car to spin. We'll have a quick look from up here if we can. Oh, he was three wide in there. I think there might have been a bit more contact on the exit. It's the 159. Oh, he just bounced off the side of him. 
and then Jan gets hit, and then all of a sudden, look, he's just sat in the middle of the road. He does the right thing. He's held the brakes. He's made himself as predictable as possible, but then eventually a car hits him, and look, it carries on. There's a few of them further back that just go into it flat out, and that's, that's where, unfortunately, a lot of the responsibility lies. You do have to just, even if you think you may get hit from behind, you have to slam on the brakes and just take all pace out of the potential incident that you can. I mean, we've got 10 cars that are currently sat in the pit lane. There's a bunch of them. Another 10 have been in since then. Uh, we'll have a look at what happened as well to... Was it Nathan Barnett that went around? Had a big old off. To be fair, Yanis Albert went back off the circuit as well. Scott Kostrick, Luke Lachesi had an issue as well. I'm going to try and catch up with it. I'm scrolling down a lot here because of all the incident that <laughs> happened. I do apologise, everyone. Yes. We will get back to pictures. A lot of things that happened in our event here. So this is John Ludbrook and just lose the rear end. And I think when he tries to light up the rear end to get back up and running, I think a second car collects him. Oh, there. Oof, rather, he collects a second car. And that was just, again, a little bit of impatience potentially from John Ludbrook just creeping in. Obviously, with the incident, so many drivers want to get back up and running right away. But I think yeah. it's the case of realizing cool head probably prevail and maybe result in less damage this is Jack Wyborn trying to recover from his incident I do apologize I've gone a little bit too far past it but it just yeah he tries to get out of the way to be fair but it's just the car isn't behaving and, and it's not going to at that point so this was further on from Xavier Talavera he's in the Ferrari and he's on the brakes look he's just slowly making his way through and then he gets clouted by a Porsche that's yeah just I mean, flying through the accident Xavier did everything right there, I think. Yeah, you he did. see that he was on the brakes for pretty much almost all of the corner, just slowing down, not aggressively to lose control of the car, but rather gently to keep control of the car while also sort of arresting the speed. Mm. And then all of a sudden, just a car that wouldn't have been called up his inside until the moment of contact, unfortunately. Moving away from all of the dramas and incidents in the opening lap, though, we do have some racing in close action out on circuit to bring you, and it is this fight for fourth place overall, second in the Premier class, and this is Engelstad trying to defend from Alex Fretwell, who, let's not forget, won the Premier class last time out, didn't he, in the first race of the season. He was the driver that took top honours in the Premier division. Absolutely is. He's going to be fed up of looking at the back of Quad Dash racing cars, though, because he fought hard enough to get past Gianni Terha, who is just ahead of these guys. Three different manufacturers in the top three there. We've got Jean Brayton back and Jean McLuhan flying the flags for people called Jean at the very front, it's safe to say. BMW and Porsche there, and Van Rens continues to hold his lead in the Evo division. But, yeah, it seems like this premier class, which I believe has the most drivers of the three classes, is certainly the one to watch in the opening couple of races so far anyway that will change as the season goes on there will be definite races where mm. some classes are more exciting than others but this is Caelan Bartlett second place in class at the moment mm. he's got Sarah Cardesla in front of him and then he's got Wesley Van Rens just ahead of that you can see the black Ferrari actually just two cars ahead that is the class lead right there yeah, we haven't seen to do much of a uh, car ahead, actually, of uh, Hussein and As Oh, look at that, that looking around the outside. Caleb Bartlett more actually is evasive action, not anticipating the Porsche slowing up and stopping as well as it did. And that's another thing that cars have, they sort of have different strengths and weaknesses. And mm. uh, actually, to be fair, Caleb is also in a Porsche, but that car stops so well, doesn't it, Chaz? That's the real strength of that car, is just how quickly you can get it to stop coming into corners. Yeah, definitely. Really is a, a great strength to have as well because it gets you out of trouble. I'm just looking at Owen Seward here. He's one of many cars that are still filtering out of the pit lane, actually. There's a few of them that have come back out. Tristan Dino Brega is continuing on. He's 34th outright at the moment, but he was right in the thick of that accident. It was actually, to be fair, Troy Dolinchek, race one winner that got through it all. I thought it was uh, him that got caught up, but it was the he's the 217 car as opposed to his teammate being the 270 car. So I got the uh, the two of them confused. I do apologise. He's got Engelstad behind him. We've got cars coming into the pits. Rob McKee and Stephen Donnelly making their way in. Probably drivers again just trying to get out of the uh, the sort of pack racing, aren't they? Just not having to compromise your line, not having to break early. They're just getting out of it where they can to just get some free air. Yeah, and that's all they can really do at this moment in time, isn't it? Just 
break through, get early pit stops potentially to find their way through, maybe fix some damage that's happened to them. It is spread out the field a considerable amount. It's got some close battles here and there, but by and large, the field has certainly spread, but we know that it will probably close up again when the remainder of the field make their one and mandatory pit stop. It's for well. It's gone up ahead of Tristan Engelstad and is now set to sight on the other Cop Dash Racing journey to Ha. This was how the move oh. was made for no, Delinchek. Here's, on, here's uh, Fretwell. Sorry. Sorry. Here we go. This is Fretwell. And is this up the well through Feradura? Just well, keep him once the the car finally balanced. Whoa, 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 I'm one of them. Lovely little dive up the inside. Catches <laughs> me off guard and certainly catches Tristan off guard. Lovely little dive. Goodness me. That was a fantastic send, that by Fretwell. No mucking about that time round. Martin Kenyon saying the Adwins will have a lot to look at. Well, Alex Fretwell is one of them. He'll be loving watching that one back. Troy Dolinchek goes through. Troy, don't forget, was fastest in practice and then in qualifying. So he's uh, he's got past Alex. I imagine without too much of a fight, Alex probably thinks he could use him for a bit of slipstream to move forward. Big stream of cars here led by Wesley Van Rens. He's got Hussein at Sarah Kadesla just behind him. Then Caelan Bartlett, Dennis Collar, Jamal Gandor. Great mix of drivers and nationalities as well, actually which is always lovely to see. Danny Weir and Graham Matthew. Graham running the uh, Barwell Motorsport Lamborghini livery for this year that's racing in the British GT Championship. They had their media day just on Tuesday. My brother was there dribbling all over this Lamborghini. He loves the Huracan. I don't blame him, but it races right here with its 5.2-litre V10-engined counterpart, the Audi R8 of Danny Weir. Can't quite get past at this stage, but we go back forward to this, though, Ed, because... Got a wonderful train of cars all together here, actually. With, uh, if we go back to Caelan Bartley, you can see the three of them. A little bit of a gap back to Jamal Gandor. And these guys fighting for the top honours in the Evo class with Sarah Kardesla in the middle of it in the Premier class. Yeah, and it's uh, good to see some different drivers that we didn't quite see a lot of in the first race shining in the second. I mean, the car behind Caelan Bartley, Jamal Gandor. We saw a lot of him qualifying, but then seemed to the fate seemed to work in a funny way. I mean, we didn't see any of him in the first race because of the incident that fell him at the very start of the races. Tristan Engels that makes his mandatory pit stop now. Drops back through the order. Maybe opting for some clearer air. I'm hoping that if maybe Jean Taha, Alex Fretwell, the drivers he's racing with, get in a battle and slow each other down with Dolinchek approaching. That kid help him to get into positions but it looks like he's gonna be right in the thick of an evo class battle he absolutely is Look there is right in behind graham matthew yeah he's actually not too bad in terms of traffic behind but he's still gonna have cars in a sort of on paper slower class that may hold him up here so tristan engelstad needs to get on with this and get by them as soon as he can it's good to know as well that on the fuel they can easily make it through sort of 20 minutes of the race as such so the drivers can take the fuel on board after only about 10 minutes of racing and get that early stop it's great to see that they've got that many options Christoph de Mai going down the inside of Kona Arts there uh, actually no apologies that was not Kona Arts he was going down the inside of who was that I think that was a car that was a lap down they were going past there but Christoph now in the battle with Yanis Albert Yanis is not a driver to hold back and muck about is he Yanis is very exciting to watch, this young man, the German driver. Very exciting indeed is Yanis Alba. He likes to give everything. I've seen him around before. On the various things, I was in various different leagues. And now he's right in the middle of it. But look at the middle of this battle there. The BMW <laughs> <laughs> sliding his way through Christoph Demai. Nearly making his demise. Hey. Very tricky situation <laughs> to be in three wide. We've seen so many drivers demise. fall foul of those moments but seemingly Christoph nice and clean but look at that three wide again into the center this time up the inside Yanis Albert he fancies a crack at the Porsche now close to oh. touching and they do touch a little bit leaning on one another a flash of the headlights tells you all you need to know about Alex's opinion on that incident Kurnerat's not best pleased but I tell you what I loved every second of that that was excellent battling and I think just on the limit of what drivers can get away with yeah, definitely. That was really hearty, hearty stuff, I should say. It is uh, Jean McLuhan, second place at the moment. He's 1.2 seconds off Sean Brayton back. Oh, Matt Barnett has actually just gone to the top 
of the times there, but Matt Barnett is sort of jumping up and down from the pit lane by the look of it. Uh, John Breitenbach still leads the way for barbecue bread racing. Not quite sure that's a sort of flavour combination I've ever thought of, to be honest with you, but doing a good job in the BMW. It's a shame that it looks the way it looks. But we've got Jean McLuhan second, Gianni Teha leading the Premier Class, then Troy Dolinshek, race one overall winner. Next up, he's got the Ferrari in front of him now as Jean. The Ferrari ooh, decides to get out of it last second there. That's Stefan Jovanovic, or Steven Stevan Jovanovic, I should say. The privateer in the very subtle gold Ferrari tries to move out of the way of these guys. Don't know how many headshots he's had to get to get that uh, gold Ferrari, but it must be quite a lot of them. Sean McLuhan going through, leading this trio. Look at that, Troy Dolinchek at the back of this Porsche trio now with an easy opportunity to get past these guys, but they're both in different classes of their own as well. So many elements to this, Ed. I love it. Yeah, yeah all the different permutations and intricacies of these second races. We can see what drivers we expect to do well based on the performance in the first race, but... That doesn't necessarily always translate into the second as Troy's trying everything to get past Gianni up ahead. But that wonderful pink and blue rear is sticking with him out ahead, filling up the windshield. It's like, I'm really closing in on Breitenbach and Sean McLuhan, but I'm going way through is Alan Bartlett. And there's a car in behind I think that is Nathan Crook so not for position mm -hmm. but it is Wesley Van Rens for position in behind him Wesley was in the lead of the Evo class but has since lost out to Kalen at this moment in time yeah and he's then got Ryan Ottens behind him in that bright yellow Porsche and he's also a lap down so Crook and Ottens are fighting for position and so too are Bartlett that we ride on board with and Van Rens just in different classes so he needs to be uh, careful not to get caught up in anything. Simon Cheshire and Joe Glass are into the pit lane as we continue to ride on board with the Aura Motorsports Omega Porsche. Anybody pit in? No, none of them pit in this time round. It looks very, very menacing, does Wesley's Ferrari. As there's Simon in the pit lane. And these guys continue on for another lap. An easy way to tell the, uh, the classes apart as well, by the way, is the, uh, the numbers on the cars. The Evo class have two-digit numbers, anything below 100, and then between 100 and 200 are the Premier class, and then the Elite class at the top are 200 and above. Just in case, just in case you wanted to know that, everybody. Still, race continues, big train behind. Look at this lot here. Yanis Albert's got about 58 cars behind him with a 51-car field. He's got Russell Jacques, Simon Cheshire, Danny Weir, Joe Glass, Alex Kernrat, Graham Matthew and Jamie Reese, all in that train, all in different classes, different stages of the race. Some of them have pitted, some of them have not. Wow, this is GT racing, multi-class GT racing at its absolute finest, I think. This is awesome. It really is. You can see Joe Glass going side by side with Danny Weir. Danny up the inside, holding on to that 19th position. So close as well, obviously, like you say, they're not battling for position in terms of their class, but they are battling for on track position. It's great to see them not giving a hoot about who they're racing and just going for it regardless. It's wonderful to see as Yanis Alba is going for the back end of Engelstad yet again. Yanis has been certainly in the thick of a lot of the action here tonight, for better and for worse, but hopefully for better for the remainder of the race with of 13 minutes still to go. How has it already gone past half race distance? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know, but long may it continue. Uh, the lead battle, by the way, is only half a second now. Troy Dolinchek is four tenths behind Breitenbach, and he's also ahead of Tehar as well. So if Dolinchek can get the race lead before he even has to do his first pit stop, then that will show you the pace advantage, and it will really make a stamp on the championship well, that from Dolinchek. I don't believe he was with them last season as well. I remember uh, Yanis Albert earlier on was uh, tagging one of the RDSA Esports guys in uh, Discord saying, I don't like your new driver <laughs> because he was a lot quicker than everybody was Troy. But like I've said, 7,000 die rating Troy Dolinchek. That used to be easy world championship level of I racing or I rating, I should say, to be fair. 
I mean, you could still get into World Championships with that level now, I believe, although it's terrifying to think there's drivers with over 10,000 and 11,000. Into the pits we go. A scary pit entry here at Interlagos. You have to brake so hard. And whoa, looks like Terha got mighty close to the back of Dolinchek there. They make their way down this rather long pit lane here at Interlagos. Dolinchek, you can see, because he started the race much further back on the grid, he has to stop in the box much further back. There's Fretwell as well. Alex comes in from second in the Premier class. We've got a moment for Kerner Arts. Whoa, where is that? Ooh, that's... That's a new one. That was mighty far off the circuit in the PTEC GP2 car. Let's see what, uh, what's happened to him, if we can find it. Doesn't actually say he's gone off the road on my screen, but Kermarts now comes into the pit lane. Decides that enough is enough. Mm. Meanwhile, Breitenbach has gotten out ahead of the Linschek out ahead, but maybe not for long, because look at this. Defending the inside line through to Cedar de Lago. Look at the Porsche now, it's getting a run, but if he's forced to look around the outside through Feradora, he's going to find it mighty tricky. And look at this, he's oh. trying to squeeze up the inside, but no room was given. And Brayton Mac looks to be able to hang on just for one more moment, but look at Troy, he's really throwing everything by the kitchen sink at this BMW right now. And to be fair, the BMW is that beefy, it could probably deal with it as well. It's certainly a car that is not to be messed with. And Dolinchek's almost fragile little Porsche is really nimble. He's moving it around a lot. It shows great confidence to be doing that on the brakes as well. He's looking this way, looking that way. And there is the send down the inside from Dolinchek. Plenty of room given on the outside line as well by Breitenbach, who's actually got a really good run on the exit of the corner. He's going to try and swoop all the way around the outside. Can he keep the speed up? Scott Kostrick's had a drama in the background. We'll have to come back to that in a bit because look at these two side by side now, not only for class lead, but overall race lead here at Interlagos in the second round of the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championship. So close together, almost door banging into the center S's. Dolinchek a little bit later on the brakes, tries to stop it on the apex. Down the inside goes Brayton back, can't get the cut back. And Dolinchek has the lead. Great move, great racing, and it's not over yet, Ed. The two of them absolutely glued to each other as they go down towards the Cedar de Lago once more. Dolinchek still holds that inside line and Breitenbach doesn't quite have the overlap to continue on with it. But still, the battle is going on. And oh my God, there's so many battles further back as well that we need to look at. But this is the overall race lead. And we will quickly cut away to this because Engelstad's still got Yanis Albert filling his rear view mirror. Cheshire and Pew are right together as well. Goodness me. It's so much action everywhere, isn't it? It's action everywhere. I think Breitenbach was a victim of his own success. He had a nice little run out of the center S and then coming down through Cover the Soul all the way down the retro He just was too close to Dolinchek to really get the slipstream, the slingshot and the overspeed to fight his way through. This is uh, Kunrat's, I think, oh, earlier on. Oh, no. Well, anyone that's watched, I mean, he's the one flashing the lights, but I think that's on him, to be honest with you. I mean... Anyone that's watched my broadcast before knows how much of a pet hate of mine it is moving over when you're on a straight. It does not benefit you, and there's no need to do it. And for me, I don't see what he was expecting there. But the other Porsche was just sort of holding his line, and that's that, I'm afraid. But it happens. It's close racing. You can't always see exactly how far away you are from each other. We lack a lot of the peripheral vision in sim racing sometimes. But, yeah, that was uh, just... You know, it's a bit of mind game sometimes, trying to squeeze your opponents, but a little bit unnecessary in a straight like that, I think. Yeah, again, it's just when drivers are battling away, they get sort of tunnel vision, I think, and they don't see the bigger picture around them. And it was just one of those little tiny moments that's really had a big effect. And it's sad to see, but regardless, the race continues on. And Troy Dolinchek continues on in the lead of this race familiar position for him after leading pretty much every single lap in the first race now looks to lead the remaining laps in the second just an angles that we can see here third position in the premier class ninth position overall and it's Albert for company got the beefy Mercedes now roaring away behind the higher pitched screaming Lamborghini Yanis got by just less than a lap ago 
And is now trying to make moves to catch up with Christoph de Mai because that's the original big beefy car that he was chasing earlier mm. before the Mercedes got between the two of them. Uh, looking a bit further down at uh, Van Rens, he holds the lead in the Evo class by nearly 10 seconds now. He's got the biggest lead of any class leader at the moment. We need to look at this lot though because Gareth Newton is second in class in the Lamborghini. He's got Tristan Dino Brega behind him, but then Caelan Bartnett, Rob McKee and Russell Jack are all together in their Porsches trying to battle over second, third and fourth in their class. We ride on ball with Russell now as he looks down the inside of Rob. Rob's got a better run there though with a much more optimal line and he's trying to have a go at the back of Caelan Bartlett. Or Callan Bartlett, we'll get that confirmed in the uh, in the Discord between, so apologies Callan or Caelan. But these Porsches now, just there's like a bungee cord on the back of them, isn't there? You could see how quickly they all concertina together. All it takes is one bad run and the battle is just completely on again. Yeah, and it's wonderful to see sort of how close they are to fight. And don't forget, this is in the lowest class, but you wouldn't believe it if we didn't tell you just the quality of race and how close they are together, how respectful they are in their battling. You can really see that the level in this championship is certainly very strong. But there was a slightly poor run, though. Mm. Over to Sol, and now is this going to give a little bit of a run for Rob McKee for DXT Mertz. What's he's looking for outside? Is he going to break so he fight for it? Not quite, but he's really putting the pressure on. Yeah, he did a good job there, to be fair. He was just putting the car in the right place at the right time. Russell Jack now wants a piece of this instead in the number seven machine. Goes to the left-hand side of Rob, tries to hang it around the outside. Nothing doing this time, but can he get a cut back on the exit and then look down the inside? No, he's not carried quite enough pace that time round, but he's got a tighter line through the right-hander. It's then going to be a bit of a level playing field again through the left. That's a part of the circuit where you really have to be so, so careful. Class leader in the Premier class at the moment is still Gianni Teha, and he's only two tenths of a second behind Brayton back as well. He's having a great run tonight, is Teha. Fantastic way to start his campaign. Alex Fretwell, you can just see in the Ferrari in the background there, second in the class. Then they've got a bunch of places back to Engelstad. You can see that each class leader really has quite a uh, an easy lead of it. Danny Weir is off the road. There's nothing camouflaged about your Audi there, Sunshine, I'm afraid. Back onto the track he goes. Shifts down. Oh, it sounded good as it kicked into life. Just listen. What a great sounding car. But, yeah, unfortunately, it's not a very good lawnmower for Danny. But he still he didn't hit anything and he's continued on. Sarah I was about to say if we can focus on this battle because you can see now Joe Sparza really close behind and trying to find a way up the inside thing on toward there and then being forced around the outside is so difficult looking for maybe a run out of the corner again going to be forced to the outside it's so difficult to overtake around the circuit and I think a lot of drivers are having to find that out confidence around the outside Whoa. oh my word is he going to stick it so close but I think it's curled off by Sarah Cardes for just for the moment yeah Spara's really throwing everything at this at the moment he could say it's his sparring partner but he is glued to that Porsche to be fair he's saying it's gained 15 places from where this race started Robson behind them is actually the biggest mover in the field right now he's gained 24 places since the beginning of this race as Paul Robson in the uh, CHR Motorsport Porsche having a much better run than before he's got Gareth Newton behind him and then Tristan Dino Brega but another great indicator of to how mixed up this championship can be those two drivers behind are in different classes Gareth is in the Evo class and then Tristan is in the elite class but Tristan let's not forget he's recovering from the earlier incident isn't he hoping to just scramble a few points together after such a promising first round yeah was, we might have a battle on for second place as Johnny Tahar and Sean Brayton back uh, close together and obviously it's not going to be a battle for class position as Brighton back is in the elite class and Tahar is in the premier division but still you can see Jean Tahar has been steadily just sort of reeling in Brighton back the last lap it was two tenths in the favor of the Porsche so you can see how this develops as we see now through this final couple of sectors like the final couple of corners has really worked out for Brighton back just getting a much cleaner nicer run Slipstream does sort of prevent him from making any sort of daylight because you've got two long straights coming up this one and then obviously the one after the center S. 
I yeah, love watching these things at speed though down here. The way that the grandstands and the walls just blur past at nearly 260 kilometers an hour. Hard onto the brakes into the S is such a difficult braking zone as well because suddenly the circuit slopes away from you and you're trying to get the car turned and you're trying to manage the weight transfer. It is a really, really difficult place to get a car stopped. Here's the first couple of corners here at Interlago. Such an iconic set of corners though. So many years in the Formula One calendar. And so many championship deciding races here as well, actually. One of which, which has just become even more important in a certain lawsuit that's been passed recently, but we won't go into that too much. But Simon Cheshire is holding on ahead of Thomas Pugh here. Again, different classes, but he wants to keep Pugh between himself and this man, Joe Glass, doesn't he? Just to have that little safety buffer for the last couple of minutes. Yeah, he certainly will. Um, it's going to be good for him if that buffer remains for all the last couple of minutes of this race Joe Glass he's still within a fight he could potentially overtake Thomas Pugh throughout all of this it's just a testament to the drivers of the championship and the sort of respect they have for one another but also the fact that they are happy aren't they it's just a battle against one another and no one's really grumpy are they whenever someone's like oh me you're not in my class they yeah. all know what the score is and they just crack on with it yeah absolutely they do a, an outstanding job and to be fair, the, the battles between each class as well have been really fair. You know, they've been they've been hard, they've not been holding anything back, but they've been fair battles between each of the classes. Now it's about 131 per lap here, and Dolinchek has crossed the line. I thought I saw Barney waving the white flag. He is waving the white flag as Christoph de Mai looks down the inside of Kalashaw. Kalashaw squeezes him to the apex. Wow, it was brave stuff. He's probably trying to hold him up because his teammate Yanis Albert is behind him. This is almost strategic stuff here from the Sumo Racing Machines. And I tell you what, Christoph Demai will not like that one bit. He looks to the inside line. Kalashaw's in the middle of the road now. He's done all he can do. Demai just needs to get it stopped. Make sure that Kalashaw can't get a cutback. Oh, he's just about got it. And he's actually not got rid of the overlap. That's fantastic stuff by Paul. Really gorgeous driving. The two of them are right together as they come up to the double right-hander now at Feradura. Oh, Paul doesn't really <laughs> leave all the room in the world. But then again, it's a wide old car, that Beamer, so it's hard to judge. But Demai through. Great move. Consistent and very persistent driving there. Very good stuff. Like you say, it's Crystal doesn't leave all the room in the world, but he doesn't necessarily need to. He has the right to the inside line. Doesn't obviously completely drive uh, Kalasher off the circuit that would be sort of where I would draw the line but he certainly asserts his right to maintain the corner and take it as he wishes is out in front well taking race one and race two how he wishes two on the trot for Troy Dolinchek and this is a real statement of the first round he's turned up as a newcomer to the championship and really put the cat amongst the pigeons. He absolutely has. Troy Dolinchek takes round two of the championship in the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 championship. Ahead of Jean Breitenbeck and Gianni Terha takes the win in the Premier class. Jean McLuhan completes the podium in the Elite class. Fretwell finishes in second. Third place in class goes to Engelstad. And where is Wesley Van Rens? What a fantastic night he's going to have had in this Ferrari for Escuderia Panthera, the 99 car. Well, it's not 99, it's 100% tonight from Wesley. What a great result that is. Very well done to Wesley. Takes the win in round two. He's just ahead of Scott Kostrick on the road. Second place in class is going to go to Gareth Newton. He had to work hard for that one. And he finishes second for Sumo Racing. And Russell Jack is going to get a podium for MRC 493 in the Porsche. Three different manufacturers on the podium in two of the classes. And Porsches and BMWs doing a great job in the elite class but what can you say Ed Troy Dolinchek what an awesome awesome night that man has had at the very top of the table it really has been he's been the driver I think that everyone is going to look to beat especially in that uh, elite class to try and be thrown in because he has just done everything right pole position leading every lap in the first race coming through after a dramatic sort of opening few corners where a lot of damage was done to some of his rivals and kept his nose clean and then drove through for a very commanding race victory in the second race as well. It's basically the perfect evening for him. 
It absolutely is. Now, we can bring the results up, but we will uh, we'll have to scroll through them piece by piece here, I'm afraid, everybody. I'm sorry that the graphic is so ugly, but I've, uh, I've already explained my interest in <laughs> fixing this. So it's Dolinshek takes his second win of the night ahead of Jean Breitenbach and Jean McLuhan. Those two did really well because they both started on the front row of the grid as well. Christophe de Maij finishes in fourth place ahead of Paul Cowlishaw in fifth. Yanis Albert finishes in sixth place. Definitely one of the most lively drivers of the evening. Thomas Pugh was next up in seventh with Jamie Reese in eighth. Tristan Dino Brega was in ninth ahead of Luke Lucchesi. Didn't see too much of him in the second race, but I think... He was hampered by the initial incident. Uh, Ryan Ottens finishes 11th with Yian Stitchbury in 12th place. And no, apparently it's not going to scroll now. Brilliant. Okay, let's try and bring up the Premier class results anyway. See now this one will. How strange. Okay, Gianni Terha takes the win in that class with Alex Fretwell in second place. Tristan Engelstad in third. I believe that's actually the same podium from the first race as well. Uh, Simon Cheshire finishes in fourth ahead of Joe Glass with Marcel Brighton back next up. Matt Hoyland in seventh. Robin Aston in eighth. Matthew Jones ninth ahead of James Bostock who completes the top ten. We'll quickly move on to the Evo class. I'm too terrified to find out what happens if I try and score these results. Wesley Van Runs finishes first in that one again. Great night for him ahead of Gareth Newton with Suma Racing's Lamborghini in second place. Russell Jack finishes in third. Graham Matthew in fourth with Rob McKee in fifth. Danny Weir was sixth ahead of Caelan Bartlett. John Ludbrook in there in eighth place ahead of Owen Seward and Alex Boniface. Thank you very much, Spotify, for hating the fact that I can talk for more than 30 seconds at a time. My goodness, Ed. What a night. <laughs> <laughs> what a night, mate. What, what can we say? <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it? Up and down the field across all of the classes, there was some excellent racing. I know we've got a couple of drivers in for uh, a chat, so we can speak to the man who won his class in race one, second place in race two. It's been a brilliant night for this man, hasn't it, Chas? Absolutely. Alex Fretwell joins us in the box. Alex, you must be over the moon with that tonight, mate. It looked like a very busy one, but looked like a lot of fun in the Ferrari at the same time. Yeah, uh, fantastic, to be honest, mate. Uh, obviously, the, the addition of the elite class has made things a little bit easier, but even so, uh, in Premier last season, I was sort of mid to, to lower. So, yeah, uh, a nice surprise. Hopefully not just track-specific, but, yeah, good result. <laughs> Points on the board. And what was the Ferrari like tonight trying to manage over half an hour? I know that they don't change too much, these GT3 cars, in half an hour, but when it's the full length of the race, you really have to be switched on to that, don't you? Yeah, the only real issue was uh, to the end of the, the long stint, so the first stint, um, just sort of losing the rear a little bit on the braking, but nothing sort of major. It was, it was pretty all right, to be fair. Um, yeah, just flat out the whole way. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, uh, it's it's a different kettle of fish to the endurance races that we're going to have. Of course, next time out, we have one of them at Circuit of the Americas. How do you feel about going there in the Ferrari? Do you think it's a bit more manageable at a circuit like that? Um, possibly, yeah. Uh, but, but for the, the one hour, that's, that's fine. I've done uh, plenty of endurance and a lot of them in the Ferrari. So, yeah, the one hour will, uh, will not be a problem. Um, just trying to think back over the race. Uh, the second race, obviously, I, I, I took all the margin out of the fuel at the stop um, to try and get back on terms with uh, Gianni after <laughs> sitting behind his teammate at the start. Um, so that, I thought, at, at one point made it a little bit tight on fuel, turned out to have plenty. Um, and that, unfortunately, meant I had to drop a little bit behind Jean. If I could have stuck on the back of him for the whole race, maybe I could have had a crack at Gianni again. But no, I'll take uh, first and second. Absolutely. A great way to uh, start the campaign. You never want to be on the back foot going forward. Um, is there anyone you'd like to give a quick shout out to tonight, Alex, before you go? Uh, just my two teammates that couldn't be bothered to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, James and Gary, hopefully uh, see you soon. Lovely stuff. Great to see you, Alex. Very well done tonight, mate. And we'll hopefully speak to you again at Cota. Have a good one. That's all. Thanks a lot, lads. Cheers. Yeah, great night for uh, Alex Fretwell tonight. Had really, really positive results for him. But as I say, it's it's all about getting the results in early, isn't it, in a championship like this? Yeah, it's all about getting off to a good start. And I think Alex has had a brilliant one for his championship hopes, hasn't he? Getting, the, obviously, the first place victory in his class and then second place, keeping it very respectable as well. Finishing high up the order as well, bagging some very strong points. So uh, I don't think anyone's been uh, quite scoring as many points, though, as the next man that I think we're going to bring in for a chat, Chess, because I can see 
race one and race two winner joining us in the box now. Absolutely. Troy, man of the moment tonight. You must be very happy to start the campaign like that. Talk us through it, mate. Yeah, obviously, re really happy with the results. Um, first race went to plan. I had, a, I had a quite a very close quality, as you guys would have seen. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I had, a, I had a really awesome first race and, and just got a, got a little bit of a break from the guys. But, yeah, they were, they were really quick and, and kept me honest throughout the first race. And then I was excited for the second race with the, with the invert. But just trying to keep it a, a bit patient in the, in the, on the first lap and it looked to pay off. But yeah, it was chaos in the, in the first two corners. Um, luckily came out unscathed. Um, was in about, I think, fifth or sixth and then just started working my way through from there. But you know, the guys were really quick and it, it was quite difficult to, to catch them. And, and you know, obviously catching is one thing and passing is another. So it was, it was really, really tricky, but obviously really enjoyed it um, as well to, to move through the cars and had a really nice start with a couple of the guys um, towards the front. Yeah, that's one of the best things about a series like this. Ed and I were talking about, you know, there is a pace spread through the field. There's the different classes, but there's always somebody to overtake and someone to race with in something like this. Even for you guys at the front as well with lap traffic, isn't there? It's it's, it's always a busy race. Yeah, ex exactly. And I think something which I haven't experienced from a lot of the racing or, or some of the racing that I've done is just this, the sheer amount of cars on track, which was really awesome <laughs> to see. Um, so yeah, that, that was something really awesome to experience. And, and with so many guys, like you said, obviously there's a bit of a field spread, but the top 15 are all within more or less a second. So the, the pace is really close in the front, especially the race pace. So it was really awesome. Well, you certainly sound like you've enjoyed yourself, Troy, and that's before the results considered as well. It was uh, certainly the strongest night you could have had. Um, what are your feelings towards Cota at the next one, Circuit of the Americas? Yeah, I just heard now, I just asked a couple of the guys what the track is next, and obviously Cota's a bit of a, a quite quite a different track to this. A lot of slow corners, a lot of high speed, a lot of change of direction, so hopefully the Porsche is, is suited to that track as well. Um, it was really quick here um, at Brazil, so um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see a bit closer to time, but yeah, really excited for the next round. So are we. It was an absolute joy tonight, Troy. Um, anyone you want to give a quick shout out to? Uh, yes, just uh, the the the, um, the RDSA guys, Tristan and, and Luke, and, and especially to Luke just for paying my entry and entering me and, and getting me involved in the league. Um, yeah, just a big th thanks and shout out to them. Cracking stuff. Always a pleasure, Troy. Thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you at Kota. Thank you very much. Well, fantastic lad to speak to as well, Ed, and a great character, yeah. it seems. But, yeah, enthusiastic about it, and he really enjoyed himself out there. And that's the main thing about championships like this, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously easy to enjoy when you win both the first and the second race, but yeah, I'm yeah. certain that he would have enjoyed it <laughs> just yeah. as much if he was fighting down in the midst of the uh, elite class as well. So I think the uh, race victory is just the cherry on top for Troy, because... He certainly seems like he's going to be in for a very fun championship, as is this man. Yes, absolutely. Gianni joins us in the box. Gianni, you must be also very pleased with tonight. Strong way to start your championship. And boy, you had some great battles out there as well, didn't you? Oh, I'm, what I said, I'm so stoked at this point because this is also the first time I won a league race for myself. So oh, congrats. So it started in directly like this, it's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. My teammate and I, we worked very hard for this and then to actually see it pay off it was well, <laughs> beautiful well congratulations Gianni I know that it's it's a wonderful wonderful feeling when you finally make that breakthrough but to do it at the start of the season as well it must be very important to come straight out of the blocks with a good race win yeah it's indeed good to in uh, to start well and yeah to have a p1 and p2 in the first day is basically mm. yeah perfect start um but yeah, the, there are some tracks still that are difficult and this track for some reason fitted me very well. So uh, it's a good start, but yeah, we stay sharp for uh, the rest of the races where we also need a lot of practice still. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You can't take your foot off the gas in a championship like this. There's great competition behind you though, isn't there? That Premier class is mighty packed with really quick drivers. Yeah, insane. At this point, the, my teammate and I are quite strong I think for especially how this race went because uh, I was P1 and P2 and he was twice P3 uh, where Alex also P2 so that seems like a very great competitor and yeah like you said we had some great battles together uh, so yeah I think the it can be a very interesting fight for the championship and that's what we look forward to as well from up here in the commentary box uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a quick thanks to Gianni while well, we've got you in the box with us yeah my teammate of course because we had of course we were in the Boys chat together, also discussing the strategies. We train together, we push together, and uh, yeah, I would also say the people that we that I fought today, they 
did a massive good job. And maybe in the heat of the moment, I swear a bit to them that they didn't give me the room. But <laughs> yeah, that's because of the the fight. And afterwards, is uh, yeah, it looked like great battles. And I really can't wait to hear your commentary about it all. <laughs> oh, it was awful. Don't worry. But <laughs> no, it was. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it promising. No, it was it was great fun. Ed and I have had a brilliant night up here, Johnny, and you and your fantastic battles have contributed to it. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Congrats on the results, and we'll see you at thank Circuit of the Americas. Yes, can't wait for it, and also uh, can't wait to hear it all. <laughs> Smashing stuff. See you soon, buddy. Yes, yeah, see you soon, mate. Cheers. Well, we knew, to be fair, Ed, before we even spoke to Gianni, that he was really hyped. And to be fair, even just yeah. in the Discord like text chat throughout the day, he's been great entertainment. He really does stick with it in the racing as well, and his interviews. Yeah, it's great, obviously, to have that level of excitement and enjoyment after an evening's worth of racing. I think he's hit the nail on the head in that interview that the championship, especially in the uh, Premier class, is looking very close between the two quad dash teammates of Gianni Den Ha and uh, Tristan Engelstad. Mm. Then also the spoiler in the pack, that Ferrari, Alex Fretwell, winning the first race, second place in the second race. He's going to be a real one to look out for, especially actually at the next round at Cota, where the straight line speed is going to be so much more in effect. And that Ferrari, pretty good in the straight line. Yeah, I saw some of the guys in the uh, the Discord mentioning that before, actually. It's not something that uh, I'd picked up on over the course of tonight, but I suppose it's not really one of those circuits in Lagos, as you've mentioned, that will bring that up. Uh, another quick thanks, by the way, to our championship sponsors, Keenan Eco Energy, uh, Medius as well, and Kame and AB Designs. It's been another brilliant, brilliant night here on Chaz Dracot Media, but I tell you what, this championship has exploded onto the scene. It's been awesome to watch. Thank you to all the drivers for taking part and, of course, giving us the amazing show we've had. Thank you to you, Ed, as well. It's been a great start to the season and also to all the admins and organisers for getting us on to do this. I've absolutely loved it. It's been brilliant. James as well, James Bostock, the admin of the series, has been awesome to work with in setting this up and aside from my little muck-up with the results, we'll get that fixed for next time there's always of course these little details and things to work on but that is unfortunately all we have time for here tonight on Chaz Draycott Media for the Evolution Sim Racing GT3 Championship from Interlagos and we will see you in a week's time at Circuit of the Americas where we have an endurance race one hour long even more pit stops involved it's going to be a riot thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in a week Four French drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Guillaume down the inside. Guillaume moves across, they're both in front of Milan and Pouget. But before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, he's been loved and a terrific go out. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.